And once everything kind of gets settled, as we are now streaming, so if we can get a quick check out there to make sure that people can see our stream. I still got a commercial. Yeah, I hate when it does that. Hi. Can we hear us? Hi. Can we hear us? Yes, we can. Right. Yeah, hearing it through the, this one. <laughs> yep, yep, and I'm going to go ahead and kick the stream off itself. So, oh well, this has been fun. Hopefully, it'll it'll go better. I lost all of my Deutsch marks. Good thing I spent a bunch of them buying those rolls for the other game. See, you bought some too. I gave every player except for Corvus at 20 of them in the last uh, five years. I told him I wasn't going to give him one too because he ripped this over. I guess it's the deal robbed all the players so we can't buy any more for people. Oh, we can't? What? I got no more coins. Oh, I got 12,000. Hey, Jamie, hey, Jamie. <laughs> Oh, wait, I'm not logged in. Ah! <laughs> Posting some some ads for Mamo and some uh, viewers. Let's see. And we are live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to tonight's episode of One E One Shots. I am Sean, your host. Bringing you together with the finest first edition gamers that the planet has to offer. Well, at least that this channel has to offer. Um, appreciate you guys showing up with us on a Monday night. I know that you guys could be out there watching the Seahawks play, but as I have been telling our players and my players have been telling me, they would much, much rather be here watching this shit show than on TV watching the Seahawks shit show. So welcome, everybody. Appreciate you making time to visit with us tonight. Um, and yes, I'm doing a dig at Ronnie because Ronnie's been griping about the Seahawks playing tonight and him playing tonight. And so now he had to kind of juggle the two to figure out um, what uh, what he was going to do. But let me, first of all, as we get started, we are having like technical issues already today. Um, just for for some reason... Um, there was an update on Forge, and our character sheets are no bueno. So when we open up uh, our character sheet, as you can see, when we open it up, uh, the whole sheet is blank. 
Um, if we go to abilities and stuff, that's there. Lists of spells are there. Inventory is there. All that stuff is there, but nothing's clickable. Um, so, for example, if he was wanting to hit with his knotted club, no dice gets rolled, as you can see. And why is that? I don't know, because stupid forge. Um, so we use the old school essentials module. Um, there's obviously some hiccup in there somewhere. Um, for those that know code, I was actually looking at the, the code for it right before this started. And there's an, some kind of an error happening on the button click. At least, I don't know why the main screen is blank, but for weapons and abilities and stuff, they're not clickable right now. There's an error getting thrown under the hood that basically says, I'm trying to do this before I'm ready. And so when I was testing right before we went live, I actually, I'm able to break point where that was happening in the code. And I just sort of let it sit there for a second. And then when I released it and let the code process continue, it worked. And so there's something in there that's, it's happening like too fast. And so data is not being loaded in a timely manner. So I have not done any update to our modules, um, but obviously something went awry. I do. I, I can't say that's 100% true. I have done updates to, to some modules like a couple weeks ago, um, but not since the game has released, at least nothing related to OSE. Um, some of the other modules, yeah, but they don't, as far as I know, everything getting thrown here airwise came from the OSC module. So um, tonight's going to be a little bit of a um, challenge in the sense that uh, we're going to have to do things old school. Our players are going to have to, at the bottom of our chat, for those that have never seen, if you go to the chat, at the very bottom we've got dice so we can actually um, select dice to roll and then roll it that way. Uh, not ideal, but is what it is. So, oh, is that, did you get that, Barris, from a, uh, from your macro? macro? Yeah, the macros work. So if you execute a macro, the macros will work. Um, but if you try to click it through your character sheet, it does not. So um, <clears throat> macros aren't directly related to OSE, but obviously the, character sheet is and how everything interacts and stuff so that's cool so if you had macros that are built that's definitely uh you can still continue to do that if you need to um so yeah so let's kind of talk a little bit um and get this thing kicked off as as you all know we're for those that have been here before uh welcome back if you've never been here before welcome please click that follow and like button and whatever they call it on twitch um with the little alarm bell thing so you get alerts whenever we go live Exclamation point socials to give you our uh, our Twitter and our and our uh, YouTube in case you can't watch the whole stream or you miss a day or a week I should say you know we we post all of our um, streams almost immediately right soon as soon as we're done streaming usually I'll hang out for 15 20 minutes and within that time frame I'll post things over to YouTube, they are unedited, so a lot of times we do have some lead time, like I'll start streaming about 15 minutes before the game, just so we can make sure any technical stuff. Tonight was a little different. We kind of launched right into it because we were discussing how we were going to handle the fact that nobody can click anything in their character sheets. Yeah, yes. Um, but at least our monster, I check monster character sheets, and all they, all them are still filled out. I can't click anything, so I'm still going to have to roll dice manually. But anyway. Um, so yeah, so we're here every Monday, 7.30 till 11.30 ish, give or take, depending upon how the stream goes. Um, typically after that, we'll have a little bit of a, an after party for those that want to hang out and just kind of shoot the breeze for a little bit. Um, you can catch us over on our discord. Um, uh, if you want to hang out with us because we move to an open channel when we do the, uh, after party, we go to an open channel. You can kind of hang out with us there. Um, if you're not much of a 1E person, which then why are you here? Um, but you also like D and D in general. We do have a five E game that, uh, we stream every other Friday and this Friday is a stream week. So this Friday you can catch us right here on the same channel, same time, uh, same world, world of Greyhawk. We're all world of Greyhawk content here. And the only difference is it's a five E game. 
Um, I, I do want to make a note about this particular game because for those that don't know or, or not in the know, um, Mythendar, our uh, recently acquired magic user, has elected not to stay with the game, <clears throat> which is cool. Um, ours kind of played a point into it. Um, he wasn't much on the 1E. Um, he's more of a 3, 3-5 three, player from my understanding, which is cool. Um, But one of the things that he said kind of caught my attention and that he felt that maybe it was because of the stream or maybe it's just how I kind of run things. uh, I tend to like push the storyline along um, and that's 100% true. Um, This is a one, what we call 1E one shots. Um, Technically, we're not one shots because a one shot implies you're going to do everything in one session, but we don't do that here. Sometimes it takes two, three, ten sessions to get through an adventure. But the premise behind this particular game is not campaign centric. Um, for me, it's more along the lines of old school D&D. When a module would come out, you'd grab it. Your friends would grab your characters and you'd go play the module. Um, I, in, in, at least in my experience, when I was first playing, we never really had a big campaign um, sort of a game. Later on, as I learned um, DM and learned more about the game, we did, we were able to have more of a campaign type, and that's what our 5e game is, right? In this game, the only thing that's campaign-like is that the characters always stay the same, and they I put them through increasingly um, more difficult adventures as they level, right? So uh, I'm not going to put these guys that are level 7, 8, 9 um, against a, you know, 12, 13, 14th level module, uh, once they start getting up there, then we'll, we'll start moving them in that direction. But, but really, the premise is once we complete an adventure, um, it's on to the next one, um, for good or for ill. Um, but a couple of good points were made, um, and I definitely want to, if, if there are those out there that felt that this should it is a campaign, I wanted to apologize for not kind of mentioning that every week, especially for people that just show up. Um, Like I said, we just literally finished um, our last adventure. And at the end of last session, when we played two weeks ago, the players were immediately set into, here's what's coming next and here's where you are. A couple months have passed, et cetera, et cetera. But then it kind of got me to thinking um, about Barris being able to heal his foot as necessary, um, the rings of spell storing, getting them recharged um, as the players may want to do. And so I'm sort of going to leave it to our players on how they would like to handle this. Um, do you guys want to go ahead and continue where we left off from last game? Or would you guys rather we sort of retcon back to the end of the necropolis where you guys have just emerged and you've just finished um, meeting with the uh, in the oasis um, uh, with the uh, with the tribesmen and stuff um, and then kind of go from there to kind of do non adventure type stuff or how do you guys want to handle it are you are you fine with how things went or would you rather sort of retcon and kind of do some of those other mundane things that, that we never really, well, we don't typically do, right? Usually when we have role play type stuff, it's in the context of the game itself, i.e. interacting with the, um, with the, uh, the nomads um, within the bright desert where you guys met those tribes and you met the centaurs um, that escorted you, et cetera, et cetera. That's kind of where our campaign sort of is as far as role play and stuff like that. The rest of it's just, Hey, adventure, start, do the adventure on to the next adventure, divvy up treasure, et cetera, et cetera. So I kind of want to take a quick pause here um, before we continue and ask the players, what are your thoughts, right? Uh, This is probably not the best place to do it, kind of catching you guys off guard, but I just want to get an idea what you guys think. Um, Do we want to do that or do we want to go ahead and do this adventure and maybe after this adventure do something more campaign-ish? Um, where you guys could do downtime type things and, and go places and do things that you may have wanted to do. For example, I know you discussed going to the free city of Greyhawk. 
and maybe finding ways to get healed or get your magic sort of um, restored into your magic items, etc. So what do you guys think? Um, what are your thoughts or ideas or what do we think? Um, oh, personally, you good either way. This is Barris. So, um, I mean, I, I like the format as it's been running. I have no problem with walking around with a gimp foot adds to the character and I can role play that. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, so, I mean, it, 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 I'm good with the picking a module and running with it. I, I mean, I personally like some cohesiveness between modules, but I yeah. mean, I came into this understanding yep. what the format was. So no, no yeah. grand illusion. Yeah, and that's what I was saying is, you know, the, the the original was there wasn't really a lot of continuity between modules, right? But we can kind of tweak that a little bit if you guys would like to bring this into more of a campaign-y in that sense, right? Um, yeah, so. well, I mean, I've been here a while now. Yep. And uh, in a sense, there is a story ongoing, at least for me and Declan and Ronnie's former character and Ronnie and right and that because we've been adventuring a while together exactly and we've gone through several like the slaver series are all kind of related yeah and, and so so they're not all entirely separate storylines right and I totally get uh, that and that's kind of what I meant but 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 for example yeah. like if, if you got like instead of sending you off into the wilds of the Amedio at the end of last adventure, I could have just said, okay, we'll pick this up next session. And this is where we're at now. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. you guys have found some treasure in here. Um, oh, yeah. And you know, Hardby is, is not too far away. It's right at the top. Uh, the, for those that don't know, Hardby kind of lies up this way in the upper left-hand corner of the map, just off the map is Hardby, which is a major city. So, yeah, so I just kind of wanted to bring that to attention. So um, mm -hmm. I just... Uh, Let me ask you a question. Because well, no. right. it's your stream, right? Or it's your game, rather. So yep. uh, not to catch you off guard, but are you gaming for the stream or are you just streaming no, a game? No, I'm streaming a game. That was the okay. whole, right? So the whole the whole premise behind is I wanted to stream, want to get online. I thought it was cool to be able to share characters like allow instead of having somebody at a game store and having people walk around and watch you being able to do it online because now I have access to players from everywhere and we can kind of coordinate our time zones and run a game. Yeah. Um, but I'm not, I'm not gaming for the stream. I am streaming yeah, our game. Yeah. Totally get it. Just, I just wanted to make sure cause it, it kind of boils down to your motivations. If we're expecting yeah. a game, but you know, you're trying to, you know, do something slightly different because you're more interested to do the stream piece yeah. of it. I mean, nope. totally respect it. But nope, not yeah. at all. So if we didn't stream, we didn't, we wouldn't have to stream. If you guys said, "Hey, I don't want to stream or, or whatever," then we could still play because we still have Forge, we still have everything else. We just don't stream it, right? So, but yeah, but like I said, I just want to make sure that um, everybody's on board and people understand what the premise behind the game is, right? So. Um, I will definitely, though, think about a little more continuity between the two because I think there, you can have some good adventures just that, right? Um, uh, it's trying to find a healer for your foot or, or um, trying to find magic users to uh, restore. Who knows? A magic user may say, sure, I'll do it, but you got to go do this for me, right? So that's what leads into an adventure, right? But it's a little more continuity between the two and stuff. So I'll kind of ponder that. And think, but I wanted to make sure that that everybody understood what the the original premise was, was that yeah I may have rushed to get you guys from here right into the next adventure, because I like I like to leave it as kind of a cliffhanger, but maybe it was a little bit too sudden last time. But anyway, um, food for thought, food for thought. Thanks for the feedback too. Um, so now let's kind of get back to our to our intro. Like I said, we're here Monday and every other Friday. This is a 1E game. Fridays is a 5E game. Um, one of our players actually plays in both. For those that are interested, um, Zad Keel, our paladin, plays a cleric in that game. Um, as you watch the game or as you watch on Twitch, as you know, you earn tokens. Um, you're able to trade those tokens in for our players. You can give them a nat 1 or a nat 20. Just click the, uh, there's a little uh, icon right next to at the bottom of the chat on Twitch. You can 
open that up and it'll show you where you can trade in. I think it's 3,000 tokens is what the setting is for a nat 1 or a nat 20. If you do that, just let us know who it's for. If you trade in that, just let us know who you want to do it for, a specific player. And then we will assign that to that player. If you can't decide on which player, then um, that's okay. Um, we can always have the uh, put it in the party pool and the party will decide when they want to use it. Um, you can also, um, for every 100 bits cheered, now this works a little differently, um, giving somebody a nat 1 or a nat 20 by trading in your tokens, um, that's for tonight's session. So I encourage you to get them in early if you haven't already. Um, because if they don't use them by the end of the session, they don't carry over to the next session. Um, however, um, if you were to cheer 100 bits, that will allow you to give a plus one to any player or DM that you desire. That does require you to be able to pick a player or DM. If you can't do so, we'll have a we'll have a roll off um, because those do carry over session to session. Um, and if I'm uh, reading this correctly, currently, um, I your humble DM has plus two available. Barris, you have a plus five and a plus two still available. Deglin, you have a plus one available. Mythendar has a plus three available. Ronnie, no bueno. You have no, you've used all your uh, roles during the last session. Varus, you have a plus one and Zadkiel has a plus two. So if you guys did not have that reminder, you do now. So anyway, um, for every 100 bits, uh, you can give a plus one. That player can use that plus one or use a one point for whatever they need. So if they miss something by one point, up or down, whatever it is, they can use that one point um, or however many they've got um, to adjust. The maximum you can have at any one time is a plus five. Uh, if you get more cheers and you still and you have a plus five and somebody cheers again, then we start a new batch so you'd have a new plus one through plus five whatever it is but you can never use more than plus five at any one time so if anything's ever outside your plus five range you're, you're not allowed to double up and use more than than the plus five at a time <clears throat> um like i said earlier if you haven't followed us please do so trying to get those stream numbers up uh, we're still a couple shy of 200 200 so we're hoping to get there we do have a merch store um you just click our about page on twitch all this stuff is available there, including our tip jar. There are several different ways you can help support the stream. Everything you guys do to help us out obviously goes right back into the stream. Uh, for those that have been around a while know um, I say that all the time, and it is true. Um, my stream deck and, and the fact that we're hosting on Forge and all these other uh, Patreons that I subscribe to to get content, um, it's all because of you guys showing up here, dedicated that you are. Um, so I appreciate all the love that you guys give. Last but not least, if you guys like Greyhawk content, we are part of the Greyhawk Creatives um, a team. If you go to our Twitch page, which is twitch.tv slash team slash Greyhawk Creatives, uh, all one word, um, check us out. Um, I believe that link is also in our about page. Um, just click and go check it out. You can see all kinds of great content providers out there. Laura Kazuma, Anna Meyer, Blue Box, Troll Lord, I think is one of them. Um, uh, art of Mike Disney, if you like like art and minis and stuff like that. Dude's amazing. Um, I got one of his uh, uh, one of his um, things up hanging up on my wall. His Overgourd, pretty badass, pretty awesome. So I encourage you guys to go check all of that out. Anyway, let's talk about what happened last week uh, or last session two weeks ago. We were. Um, in the bright desert, which is where we're shown right now on our map, um, in the necropolis of Anag, um, deep within the bowels of the earth, our paladin's warhorse was being held and used for some nefarious purpose by a an evil naga of some sort. Um, the party braved the depths beneath the necropolis, fighting off such things as the sons of Cus. Um, there was a crypt thing that they managed to avoid, fortunately for them. Um, there were a few things that they avoided, fortunately for them. Uh, but they managed at long last to free the paladin's war horse, which he now, um, has, uh, you guys escaped with your lives. Um, 
And that's kind of where we cut it. Um, the cut scene, and then we cut back into the new scene where um, our heroes um, had been contracted to aid an individual in an exploration down south to the jungles um, uh, of the southern lands and the Omedia jungle um, and the surrounding environs. And uh, unfortunately for them, they found that they were this person that had hired them was also being sought after by a, a rather powerful group um, of, uh, of folks known as the Scarlet Brotherhood and the party having been chased into the Southern waters of the Omedio, they, their vessel crashed upon the rocks and they then found themselves running for their lives in the jungle as these pirates and, and brigands and thugs that all worked for the Scarlet Brotherhood chased them. Um, and so I believe I read you guys the, uh, the, uh, the background of where you guys were. And so I'm sort of going to plagiarize it a little bit and, and refresh everybody's mind. As you guys find yourselves lost within the jungle, you sh you've realized you should never have abandoned your ship and struck out into the marshes, but your pursuers were closing on your tail and it seemed to be the only way. Stumbling through the fens, you made your way for higher ground. As you cross a ridge, the sun sunk low beyond the horizon, bringing with it the night. Breathless, you drop to the ground and try to catch your wind with the welcome rest. However, somewhere in the distance comes a sound of shouts and clamoring in the woods. Scrambling back to your feet, you force your way further into the brush, past several carved stones which lie overturned on the ground. A full moon rises, sending moonbeams and ghostly shadows down to flicker through the branches. Ahead in the woods, a light glows and seems to beckon, perhaps a shelter. Through thorn, or though thorns tear and impede your progress, the source of illumination is reached at last. And before you is a large clearing, and you see there an ancient ruin. A worn and overgrown pyramid fills the courtyard, shining in the moonlight, seeming almost brighter than the moon itself. A refuge? Perhaps tomorrow with daylight you might explore, but tonight you guys have to have rest. The sun has now risen, and after a hasty council and preparation, you have gathered up your equipment and start toward the pyramid temple-looking structure. You tread carefully across cracked and overgrown flagstones, stepping over fallen and shattered pillars, pushing aside vines and briars. As you approach, you, uh, you hear some crashing or some sounds from the distance echoing up this way and as you turn around you can see off in the distance perhaps a half a mile down the hills that you guys have been climbing um, you can see signs of people moving in this direction so you doesn't appear to have much time as I said you guys find yourselves sort of standing in this on the exterior of this temple um, where you can see, and I think I showed the picture last week. Um, making sure that everybody can see it. It's in the journal. If you don't see it, I've also got it showing on the stream. You guys can see that there is this altar um, on the back. Uh, this, this whole open area is collapsed with rubble. There's still semi-standing pillars here and there. It looks like it at one time was covered in sort of a stone roof, uh, but an outdoor type of a thing, right? So like an outdoor patio has a roof. It looks like all of this outdoor patio stuff has fallen and collapsed. There are still several walls um, half collapsed, but still partially standing that sort of surround this area. But the back wall itself um, has a... Uh, has the view that I'm describing um, or, or that I want to describe in that picture. Um, 
This is apparently a large temple of some sort. Once a major building, all that remains are the back wall and enough of the roof to shelter the altar itself. All else seems closed off by fallen debris. Several pillars have fallen and they litter the floor. Sunlight filters through holes in the roof some 30 feet overhead, which is a maze of chips and cracks. The back wall is covered by a bas relief of a giant bat thing, some nine feet tall with a wingspan of some 20 feet. In front of this wall is an altar stone carved to represent a mass of squirming rats, weasels, and worms. In front of the altar is the head of a screaming bat, and you can see that um, right there. Arching above the altar from either side are a pair of metal bat wings some eight feet long. The floor in front of the altar is worn into little hollows, so it looks like stuff has fallen and collapsed it, so there's like little indents on the floor all over the place as you guys are looking at this. So this is what you guys see as you stand at the base of these stairs leading up into this temple area. How close are those people that are behind us? Probably about a half a mile or so, you guesstimate. Is there any way to start a landslide and bury them all? Uh, probably not. It's pretty <laughs> thick, lush, pretty thick, lush stuff, but there's no real like heavy rocks or anything uh, or anything that would indicate to you that you could. Uh, um... Use it. Yeah, to use to, to sort of collapse down on them. So then, escape and evasion is our only tech. Probably. Well, once more into the breach, my my brothers. <laughs> it would seem so. How big is the uh, small army following us? Do we know? Um, from your estimation, maybe fifteen, twenty people. Yeah. Yeah, we could take <laughs> I, I look left, I look right, I count on my fingers. Yeah. <sighs> Let's go to the temple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um does this rumble look I'm gonna look for any ominous traps or okay. any hidden snakes or anything in the Okay, rumble? go ahead and give me a uh um Fine, uh, yeah, give me a fine traps that uh, I think that should suffice. That was 18. Okay, um, so you don't find any traps or anything, but a lot of the structure um, looks tenuous. Like if you were to try to climb up onto the roof part areas, um, it looks pretty uh, wobbly or at least not safe. If uh, at least even for someone as stealthy and lithe as yourself, um, climbing across the walls and stuff like that may... Maybe bad. Oh, yeah, man, might be bad. The floor itself looks like it's relatively stable, um, but you're right. not sure if there's anything below it. You know what I mean? It's it's sort of yeah. covered in rock and dirt and grass and weeds and stuff well, going up. So. Let's look around and see if we can find like a, an entrance into this area. Okay. Well, the entrance is right in front of you. This collapsed is all collapsed, and you can see into here. You can see that there's an altar here, and then you can see the big bat formation. All right, on the back. Well, you, all right. you just told yeah. me this wasn't safe, though. Oh no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I meant so this, this, these walls around here. You can see are all collapsed. Okay. But if you okay. were to climb up on top of that, there's a roof above this, right? So the, oh, these okay. sort of. Uh, what's left of the roof a lot of it has already collapsed yeah. but if you were to try to climb up on top of that say to get a vantage point to look around or something it looks like it would be unsafe okay so climbing over the rubble is not climbing over the rubble yeah that's like walking through a over, collapsed wall all right all right so that's what i want to do i was wanting to look through this rumble to make sure there wasn't like a giant snake right yep yeah you did not find anything there all right well, now I'm going to come on through. As Barris starts to follow, I'm just going to be looking left, looking right, seeing if I uh, notice any tracks of any kind whatsoever. All right, so give me a 
um, a ranger's check for tracking. It's a percentage for tracking, so just a regular right. percentage roll, right? Yes, indeed. So, woodland animals, um, for the most part, you don't see anything much larger than that. Although there are some large woodland animals, like um, there are some like large paw prints here that remind you of maybe a large jungle cat or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But for the most part, like no human footprints, um, mostly animal wildlife of some kind. All right. I'll uh, just notify the rest of the party. Uh, uh, possibly large cat tracks. Be on the lookout. Yep. So as I said, you can see that um, the back wall over here um, is this large bat thing. It's about nine feet tall with a 20-foot wingspan. There's a similar um, engraving or structure on the, the altar itself. Right here, it's a large bat, and it has like eight-foot metal wings sort of sprawled off out of it. So this, this altar is de dedicated to some bat god of some kind. Um, Although, uh, although you're unsure of what that may be right now. Bats. Why did it happen? Why does this column say Wayne Enterprises? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Um, okay. All right. Go ahead and give me a. Uh, yeah, no, you find nothing as you're, as you're going. Shit. With the dog moves up. Sad kill. Hey, uh, Jason, you want to come up here and have a look at this? I'm coming. With me. As soon as Varus steps up right where you're at, okay. you, you hear this sort of a clicking sound and the ground beneath you disappears and you guys oh, no. hear you hear Varus go oh shit as the <laughs> trap door opens up sending you plummeting below 30 feet well crashing to I shove my dagger in the wall like collateral climbing the ice wall um, <laughs> give Give me a um, a dexterity check, please. Give me a d20 and compare it to your dexterity. Hmm. That's lower. Yep. All right. And oops, I don't know why. The, oh, because I had you selected. <laughs> That's my fault. Um, there we go. Um, I am going to take off one of those. You suffer six hit points of damage. As you as you guys watch, as what you would have done had more, as you guys watch Varys disappear into some kind of a trapdoor shoot slide that just opens up beneath him, and he goes <laughs> disappearing into the the darkness below. Thanks. Can I climb my ass back out. Um, I I can lower him a rope. Okay. Um, let me really quick. I want to sort of describe where you're at right now. Sure. Yep. Um, so you actually have landed in. Um, I'm on blank. I'm on blank now. <laughs> what's that? Yeah, I yeah, because I I made you invisible, so now nobody can see you. <laughs> oh, I guess, yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, so you landed in some kind of a foyer, ten feet wide and twenty feet long. Um, a narrow hallway um, exits to the left um, and it's and then there's this sort of a this slippery slimy staircase that you just slid down um, and deposited you here um, you are able to climb back up I'm just going to need you to give me a climb walls check yeah. um, in well, order this to is no, yeah this is no ordinary trap <laughs> yeah, so it deposited you into some kind of a room below, but yeah, it was very well hidden. Um, 
easily you manage to sort of scale your way back up to the top, but you do now know that there is an entry into chambers below this temple if you so desire to take it. Yeah, I will uh, say, hey, I found uh, a way into the temple. Uh, wasn't wasn't exactly the way I wanted to find it, but <laughs> um, there appears to be some uh, slimy staircase leading into a, uh, like a tunnel foyer area that leads deeper in. Would so, it be a good place for us to hide away from the garlic? Might be. Um, really quick before I forget, um, and I should have done this earlier. I apologize. Um, Barris, what is your armor class? Uh, three. Hit points. I believe <laughs> it should be sixty-three. I. Think think that's pretty that's sure my max yeah i don't i don't have your uh character sheet for some reason yeah i don't yeah. all right I'll, so, uh, yeah i'll shoot you the original that i that's I fine had, but... deglin armor class uh negative one hit points 50 ronnie armor class Four. Hit points. Thirty-five. Varus armor class. Uh, AC zero. AC zero hit points. Forty-seven. Max. That's your max, right? Or is yep. that that's after you got the six off? No. Or, okay. Forty-seven is my max. Okay. I'm gotcha. at I'm at forty-one yep. right now. Yep, I just want to make sure. And the reason I'm asking, guys, is because I don't have your sheet, so I wanna, I'm want to i going to make sure that I help keep track here um, on the... Uh, and then Zadkiel, I don't even think I have his latest sheet. So, yeah, I've got him as a at fourth level, so I don't even know what his max is, but I know his armor class is like a negative two or something like that. I think he was a negative two and something like 70 hit points. It wasn't that high. It wasn't that high, but um, I'll get his hit points. With hopefully he's got his sheet. And Mythendars, I didn't know what his is either, but I've got his, he sent me his latest sheet. Um, armor class four. And hit points twenty one. All right. So at least he sent me his character sheet updated and stuff. So, all right. So again, I apologize. So yes, um, Varys, as you come back up, um, you describe for them down below and we can pick up where we left off. So do we want to go down and maybe take something and put it over the hole of this thing as we go down so they don't know we went down this way? Varys, you what know gonna... that... Sorry, Varys, you know that you could reset the trap from below if you wanted to, and you could even probably, with a correct find removes trap, <clears throat> with, a, with a successful find removes trap, you could set it so it doesn't trigger. In other words, you could close it up. And... Yeah, let me do that. Yeah. Okay. I was seeing doing that. Okay. All right. Yeah, what are we going to do about the Paladin's War Horse? Paladin's War Horse isn't with you guys right now. Yeah, I think he can summon that anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not right? sure. I don't remember all those rules, but I do know that you guys got on the boat and you were going, and so he didn't take his war horse with him on the boat trip. That's my the story, boat, and I'm sticking the, to it. The boat wasn't our swan boat. No, it was not. No, no. We still have our swan boat in a bag of holding. Probably. Yes, right. you do. Just wanted to make sure. Might need yeah. that and go home. <laughs> uh, right? Okay. So you guys are going to go down below then? Yeah, and then yeah, set, sure. fix that trap. Yeah, and then close it and all that jazz. Oh, can we sweep sweep around and make sure they don't see our footsteps in the dust? Yeah, Co second, cover our tracks. Amy, just a second. For some reason, where is... 
Great. So I have these, I have two sets of maps. I've got one map. There we go. There we go. Which one am I on? Okay. That's bizarre that I make sure I've got everybody here. Um, now I had two sets of maps and they're like com <clears throat> completely different artists and stuff. So like one, I, here's my DM map as one is the player's map. And so I'm like, where is, where is this on this map? Oh, here we go. All right. So I am going to do that. I'm going to move you guys. I'm just going to, I don't, now I don't know if I've got the walls on these. Let me double check. Yep. I did not complete all of the walls on here, so you guys are going to see some stuff you probably shouldn't, but there are some walls. That's fine. As we... Green just gave me a net in 20. Who did? Darling, Creep you. Well, I like it. Creep gives him a nat 20. All right, so... Let me go down here. And Ferris has a, has a nat 20. Thanks, darling. Appreciate it. Okay. As you guys come down, as I said before, here is a foyer of some kind that you guys now stand in. Um, you, uh, it's, a, it's about 10 feet wide and 20 feet long. A narrow hallway some 5 feet wide leads... Um, from this foyer, um, and actually the direction you're, uh, I'm, I'm just going to use left and right instead of north and south, <clears throat> because south is actually to your left, north is to your right, and I don't want to confuse people. So a narrow hallway leads off to the left, um, and like I said before, there's a staircase you guys just come down, leads up. Um, there is a wheel set horizontally half into the wall at the far end of the hall. This wheel appears to be a crank of some sort, and above the wheel um, is a is set a bronze lever. Hmm. Hmm. Look at that. Uh, hang on a second. Why is this? It's weird. I have to go backwards on this thing. Uh... All right. Wrote, uh... I'm just trying to look at the, uh, I have to look at like two separate maps in order to, uh, all right. It's trying to tell me that I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I do apologize for being completely unprepared on having these, these, uh, okay. I'm just trying to see where it, it's, it's telling me a description of something that doesn't exist on my map. And I'm like trying to figure out why. Oh, I've had. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that is so frustrating. I know that feeling well. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, so like I said, so go ahead and give you your investigation. What are we looking for? I'm going to see if it's like trapped and okay. what it might what it might do. Okay. Uh, what do you want me to roll? Oh, just to find or move traps. Okay. Mm, that won't make it, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so you find no traps and, and you're not sure what... Um, you're not really sure what... The, although you, you think that the lever has something to do with the little turn wheel, um, what they actually what they have to do with one another, you're not 100% sure. I'm going to leave it alone then for now. Okay. And see if anybody else wants to look at it. And I'm going to look down this hallway okay. and check for more traps. 
Yeah. All right. Just so leave it alone. <laughs> Do we know okay. what's going on? <laughs> okay. All right. Um so I really wish I would have had the walls put in this thing. I am so unprepared for this adventure, but that's okay. That's just how we roll. This is why we call it a shit show like it is, man. So um so Varus, you go down the hall for about 10 feet or so, um, and you can see that it turns to the right, and after about 30 feet or so, it turns back to the left. Go ahead and give me your another find remove traps if you wish. Yeah. Yeah, no traps. All right. Let's say I'll uh, wash my mat. I've seen them the hall. All right. You slowly work your way down the hall. Like I said, you go about 30 feet or so, um, and it turns to your left. I'm going to try and be sneaky. All right. Just for everybody's awareness, I am just going to keep um, Mythandar and Zadkiel back, and then I'll move them up to you guys whenever we need to because I don't want to keep moving them and then lose track of what I'm doing. Yeah. So I'm going to hide your channels and hide. Down the hall here. Okay. The hall turns to the left. Um, it, uh. I'm gonna stop here and, like, peek around the corner. Okay. See if there's any, like, guards or anything. Peeking around the corner, um, you don't see anything. Um, your, your vision is good enough that you can see that there's an oval shaped kind of a room. Up ahead, about twenty feet or so. Hmm. Do I see him with this is? Uh, uh, or not, or not a point. He has an angle. Let me. Uh, I'm not sure. Um. No, you're not like one hundred percent. It looks like maybe they're ladders of some kind. All right. I'm gonna just kind of. Put my head out of the shadows and wave at Ronnie to get people to come down. Okay. Um. Anybody want to turn a turn so light can, on? Oh, you mostly already. So I can, mostly so I can talk to them. Yeah. So Ronnie the passes along. Looks like there's some kind of oval chamber ahead. And there may or may not be some kind of ladder or something in it. I don't see any, any like, horns or undead or anything. <clears throat> yet. No. So the passage you are in, um, as you move along, is only five feet wide. Just big enough for two characters to watch walk abreast if you really, really tried. But it's very difficult, so it's much easier to go um one at a time it's dry and dusty and shows no signs of use for several ages mm -hmm. okay. near well. near yep um near the top of the corridor walls about three feet from the ceiling are stone lintels running the length of the passage and this corridor suddenly opens into a 15 by 15 area with the corrugated floor in the ceiling of this cubicle, 15 feet overhead is a bronze circular trap door. The cover is latched shut. In the four corners of this foyer are metal rungs that lead up and across the arched ceiling to the trap door. The rungs are broken in several places and form rusty spikes. Across this widening five foot area, the tunnel continues. So as you look at this floor, it's sort of corrugated looking. Um, and the ladders, the, the, the ceiling itself is arched up about 15 feet or so, right? And, but it's arched and these ladders sort of go f along the arch up to this circular valve in the middle of the ceiling. And if you were to climb it, you could, you would be like climbing, you know what I mean? Climbing up a ladder and that sort of all of a sudden, it, now you're sort of hanging upside down as you're climbing. Um, so yeah, definitely is interesting or strange looking um, how this would get up there. It's almost like, I don't know, like like hanging on monkey bars would be by the time you got up there because it's sort of 
arched like that. It's just kind of strange how these ladders go about. You know, I'm wondering if maybe that uh, lever and uh, wheel somehow opened that trap door above. Well, we can try that, or I can try to climb up and open it. Do we really want to open it? Because those people well, are there by now. Well, that or, um, it, it doesn't look like it's dripping water or anything, right? No. There's no condensation. Nope. So it's not like under a lake or a pool. Correct. Because I'm worried about, like, drowning. <laughs> <laughs> nope. We haven't gotten very far, so we can... No, we haven't. Test. We could maybe estimate where this would be uh, up above from what we saw before. Um, not really sure, to be honest with we you. Went, we're going technically north. Uh, yeah, right now you guys are actually moving south. south north, okay. north, north is behind you. South is directly north. ahead. Okay. Oh, okay. So that would have been, well, which way were we facing when we went down the north and south? Uh, you were facing north. Ah, so then that bat symbol thing, the altar, would have been behind us. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're like back in the jungle then. Uh, At least in the hills. Any, yeah. Are, are there any holes in the floor or is it just It's corrugated. Rain? It's corrugated. Okay. Almost like there's these um, little rectangular... It's like, you know, one of those, uh, if you look at a, at a uh, piece of thick cardboard sideways how they have it corrugated in there somehow it's kind of yep. like that only on the floor hmm hmm so that might mean it might mean drainage then blood drainage maybe to me to me somehow uh, to be sacrifice or something well I mean there's help. a I mean there's a hallway on the other side we can just Go that way for now. You want to test the floor in front to sure we don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me pull up my ten foot pole. Where do you? I, <laughs> you don't I, want to know. <laughs> probably, probably have it slung on my back, or or it's in your damn bag of holding. <laughs> I probably just buy a new one because it's probably like. <laughs> As you search for traps, you find no traps on the floor. Uh, let's see. Uh, take a step. Okay, you step into the floor. It it feels kind of uneven a little bit, but that's mostly because um, the the corrugation. So your foot's sort of partially in a little open area, along with a solid area crisscrossing. Um, but it's not like crumbling or falling away. Okay. Well, uh, you said all of the the rungs or some that are broken on each of them. Yeah, you could see they're they're um, they're broken, and you can see like the where the the metal had rusted and fallen and stuff. There's little chunks of metal kind of laying around the floor um, okay. where they where they fell out. Although there is enough to climb up there and and reach the valve, there there are some that are that are broken and fallen off. Yeah. Alright, well, I'm gonna leave it alone for the moment and just okay. go to the other side. Unless okay. somebody wants to try and play with the hell. I'll look for traps over here as well. Okay. I like Uh huh. Nice. And there's Nicely no noticeable, done. like water stain or water line on the wall or anything like that right nothing that you can see no um it the, the place is dusty and dirty but it is dry um there's a little bit of dampness because you're underground but nothing indicating like there's heavy use of water or anything like that hey um Yes, and by the way, Varys, you found nothing on the other side of that, by the way. Sure. I apologize. Let's, so let's save. Come on. What he said. <laughs> okay. You move about 15 feet or so, and you can see that the hall um, 
turns to the left and it runs for um, a 30 feet or so and ends in some kind of a door. Well, I found a door. Um, see him look at the okay. walls, floor, and yep. see if he has any yep. door this Found point. nothing up there. <laughs> wow, that was a horrible roll. Maybe you um, turn this is this the way here is blocked. Um, <clears throat> it, what you originally thought was a door is actually what appears to be a polished stone jade block. Um, wow. Well, okay. <clears throat> hey, Glenn, you want to lift this thing? <laughs> Did dollar right. signs just start flashing? <laughs> yeah, that too. Let's take this door. Do I think I can lift that door? Um, Should it new? It is. What's your, uh, what's your strength? Twenty. Yeah, you you seem like you might be able to, uh, to do something with it. All right, I'll give it a shot. All right, as Deglin sort of finds handholds in this rough jade door, he manages to. And as he goes to push it, suddenly it just falls. Um, and it slams onto the floor. And you realize that had anybody other than you with a strength of 20 or greater, I don't know where that number came from. It's like your God, as Jeskar has beamed this number 20 into your head, that had your strength not been 20 or greater, it would have fallen on you. Oh, but you manage to grip it and move it out of the way. Um, you can see that uh, there, you're in some kind of an antechamber of some kind, uh, a little small 10 by 15 foot room with an actual door made of stone um, along the uh, far wall. And look for traps right before I step in. Wow. It's gonna be one of those days. Can we reverse the dice rolls for this session? <laughs> oh. We were gonna roll high instead of low. I'm gonna need some net ones eventually. Somebody might be a net one. Alright, I'm gonna look for me. <laughs> oh boy. Alright. Uh, gonna look around. The yeah. room itself is empty, save for this huge slab of jade that now lies on the floor that you're standing upon. No, I uh, think it's worth anything. Uh, well, it's made of jade. It might be worth something, but it's very, very bulky, and uh, it won't well, fit into your bag I'll, of holding. Well, I want to bring off some of it. Get along with us, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, you got 20 strength. <laughs> um, I'm going to say it would take you a little while, but if you wanted to spend some time, I would allow you to break off a, a little chunk of this jade door, I'm sure. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, might as well get something from all the effort or no one here. Um, yeah, so I'm... Um, Right off a hunk. And, uh. You have a chunk of jade worth 200 gold. Awesome. And the value of the whole door just went down. Yep. yep. <laughs> Took you about a half hour to get it, but you got a chunk of jade off it. Well, nobody's bothering us right now. So. <laughs> that we know of. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a stone door here, right? Hey, so, man, that Ming Dynasty door was worth a lot as a whole door. <laughs> now it's worthless. You might as well just shatter it. Never yeah. remove from box. <laughs> well, we were new, baby. There we go. Do we test that door there? Yeah, I'm going to check the door for tramps. Okay. Hey. hey! Hey! You found no traps. <laughs> Is it locked? 
Uh, no, this the, it's just a heavy stone portal. It's not. There are no padlocks or anything. Oh, but, all right. Big guy with a belt of string. You push it open. I put my hand on my long sword. Nope. So yeah. Um. So the door itself opens into a large chamber. Um, first couple of things you see is there is a exit door along the far wall. It's kind of an odd shaped chamber. It has this like, um, large open area. And then there's like a small alcove off to the upper left. In the middle of this chamber is what appears to be a withered preserved form of a centaur mounted on a slab of marble, tinted green and decked out in lacquered leather feathers and copper wire jewelry. He faces um, the, uh, uh, let's see, you guys are headed, let's see, that's north. Um, he's actually facing in your direction, um, facing the west, uh, facing the west is where you guys are coming in from. Um, this centaur holds a 12 foot long bronze hafted spear tipped with a broad blue gray flame shaped spearhead. So he has this long bronze um, spear and then at the spear tip itself is made of some kind of a, a bluish gray kind of material to form the spearhead itself. It's almost like a flame. It says it's flame shaped. So as you're looking at it, it looks like it was shaped like a, a burning flame on a candle or something. About the, about the apartment that you're looking at are much jewelry and knickknacks made of beaten copper, cut and polished obsidian, shells, quartz, and coral. There's also a lot of pottery with spidery cracks etched the glazing, uh, etching the glazing. Two pottery urns have been made to resemble tall wicker baskets. These urns are filled with odd smooth stones, each about six inches in diameter uh, of the river bottom sort. So it's obviously some kind of a burial chamber and they've got these huge decorated pots with these river, flat river stones in there. They're very shiny um, type uh, stones as they've been polished. Um, much of this apparent treasure is scattered at the feet of the centaur, symbolically being trod underfoot. Well, Ronnie, you want to take a look around with me? Or anybody? Um, in, in, is this a, a, a centaur that's been involved or whatever? Or is this a... Like a statue of a centaur. No, it's a it's the um appears to be a withered preserved form of a centaur. So okay. almost like a mummified centaur. Yeah, minotaur. Okay. Not I'll minotaur. talk to it in centaur DM. Okay. I and I'll say, hey centaur, how are you? I will not poke it just yet. No response to Ronnie. He is ignoring your every word. Um, All right, well, I'm going to take my dogs out. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, the centaur says, hey, come back here with the dogs. No, it's okay. <laughs> Ronnie, so we finally learned who let the dogs out, and it was Ronnie this whole time. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we want to rob the two. I'm, I'm going to look around and use my, like, religious senses and see if it would be really sacrilegious to do. So you obviously, you realize that this is obviously some sort of a, a burial chamber. Um, but give me a wisdom check, please, um, Deglin. Give me a, uh, just roll a 20-sided and compare it to your wisdom, please. Um, meanwhile, Tavares, I'll suggest that I can't believe this hasn't been robbed already. This place has been in ruins what appears for a while. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm I'm waiting. <laughs> yep. So they couldn't open the doors. <laughs> so, based on your your extensive experience with religious iconography, um, you realize that although this creature or whatever it is. Um, obviously had um, followers or if not worshipers then at least those who knew of it or what it was and respected it and paid homage to it um, but it it appears to be 
more of a guardian chamber. Like the way he is dressed, the way he is armed with his spear, um, it appears to you that he's like the first of a set of guardians. So he's probably guarding anybody that's entering the tomb. Although there are certain guardians who were put in place to make sure nothing got out of the tomb. <laughs> so that's true. Um, um, based on the way he's facing, though, um, you would assume that it might be from people coming in because where you guys just came in from. But regardless, it's a, a guardian of some kind. Do I sense any type of uh, uh, undeadness about this guy being from the negative material plane? Uh, no. No. Um, and in addition to Ronnie saying he had to take his dogs out, give me just a second. My bird's going crazy and my wife can't sleep and she just texted me and asked me to cover <laughs> him up. So give me 30 Sorry. seconds, please. Oh, yeah, I step away anyway. All right, give me, give, me, yep, give me 30 seconds. I'll be right back. So that centaur hasn't moved and it's kind of mummified looking. Apologies, I am back. So, did uh, Varus come back yet? I know he had a bio break. No, I don't think he's back yet. For those that are out there, don't forget about your humble DM. He, uh, he is willingly, he didn't want to, but he is willingly accepting uh, nat 1s and nat 20s for himself. So, um, anybody out there wants to you know spread the love dm i'm gonna does, since i can speak centaur and i'm a little bit in tune with the world and nature does this uh i don't know what you want to call it mummified centaur does it look anatomically accurate yes it looks like yeah it looks like it's a real centaur um that was placed here mummified perhaps it died and then was given this place of honor well, I just have this feeling that it's got something worth a whole lot of value inside of that bugger. It'd Ooh. be a shame if somebody was to accidentally knock it over and break it. <laughs> Would be. Would be a big shame. Are you hinting that somebody should knock this thing over? And Well, I'm thinking about it. Right. I guess so, while Varus is off doing whatever he's doing, I'm going to look for tra secret doors up here, DM. Okay, go ahead and give me a secret door checks. D6 to be exact. All of us? Well, whoever's searching. Now is Varus. I think he had a head to head. 
Yeah, I could roll for him. I'll roll for him. He'll be mad at me, but I'll roll for him anyway. Hey, and he's, he rolls the one. <laughs> no secret doors are found anywhere. Um, although, um, Varys, in his search, sort of dumps over one of the pots, and at the bottom of the pot, um, once all the rocks kind of spill out, some jewelry spills out with it. Ooh, so we check the other pots too. Okay. Um, in the pots themselves, you guys find two silver masks that appear to have been crushed, right? They, they were made of silver and now they were piled under all these rocks. So over time, they've been sort of bent up and beat up. Um, but they're still made of silver worth 25 gold apiece. Um, you find a serpent bracelet, kind of like the ones that the uh, Egyptian women used to wear on their arms or whatever, um, kind of shaped like that. Only it's made of electrum. Uh, that's worth 42 gold. You find... That sounds like it would go nice on Ronnie's arm. Could be. Snake man. Um, there is a... Um, a, is a electrum, electrum serpent bracelet is what it is. But it's kind of like one of those arm bracelets. It was worth 42 gold? Yep. Um, and Ronnie, it seems to say cursed on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what it means. <laughs> there is a, uh, you find a, a small marble statue of a monkey that is chipped and broken, but it would still um, probably fetch 50 gold. And last I but mean, not that's got to go to monkey boogers. Yeah. And last but not least... There are a set of three silver hair hairpins that are have jade on them as well, worth two gold apiece. Okay, I, I just put it in our chat. Our, uh, oh, I'm supposed to be using it. Oh, you can however you guys want to do it, right? So. I'll put it in the loot channel. Yeah, at least you can do it there, and then we can transfer it over to the journal later. Other than that, you guys find, like I said, there's a bunch of little knickknack jewelry. It would take you a while to clean it up off the floor if you wanted to, but there's a bunch of little knickknack with some jade and some ag agates and stuff like that um, that may fetch a, a couple silver here or there. Um, but it is, there is a lot of it. It would take you a while to clean it up if you wanted to do that. How's that blade on that spear look? Is it functional or is it more ceremonial? Um, the spear itself looks functional. It's it's pretty, it's, like I said, it's lengthy. It's got a, a big stone head on it shaped like a flame with some kind of a bluish rock. It has serpent feathers kind of hanging down from underneath it, you know, kind of like the uh, the natives used to have on their, their war spears and stuff for the chiefs and that. Um, have the, the, the feathers of acknowledgement and whenever they did something cool or heroic or whatever they got to put another feather on it this one's got several feathers kind of hanging out off the neck of it probably should grab that but be careful <laughs> <laughs> tempting right i uh i don't know what do you think ronnie <laughs> well i'm thinking i am proficient with a spear Maybe we should have Varus check it for traps and uh, and certainly relieve this. Uh... All right. Hey. Welcome back. We were talking about the spear. We were thinking of maybe snagging that. Um, oh, can we, can we loot the new snow? Yeah. Floor? Yeah, it's in the, okay. in the one shot loot. Yep. Cool. Yeah, you want me to check the. the. the corpse and spear for traps yes, before we try and take it. Uh, have a have a look see here. Um does it we appear to be? It, remember? Yeah, so that's a good that's a success. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I've never seen so many 90s rolls. I have not ever rolled that many in any game ever. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god. I mean, in character, he's just walking around going, yeah, there's no traps. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys worried about? Come on. Totally confident. Yeah, pick that spear up. Good. Okay. Yeah. No yeah. save for me. No save for him. Uh, you know what? Ronnie's going to come over there bow-legged and be like, I got big balls. <laughs> and grab uh, that spear. I'm going to have my sword ringing. He's, Ronnie he's grabs a hold of the spear. Suddenly, the centaur begins to shift and move. <laughs> yeah, I know my plan. I need everybody roll me a D, or not everybody, but somebody roll me a D6 for surprise, please. Oh. Not that anybody could be surprised. All right, nobody is surprised. As we... Does this centaur know I speak centaur? Me? <laughs> Maybe ask him. All right. So let us start our actions. Barris, action. As you oh, watch boy. this mummified centaur come to life, jerking his spear back and getting ready to stab the closest person with it. Well, in my half-elven mind, mummy equals undead equals vorpal. Oh, wait, no, I mean <laughs> flame tongue. All right. Is it a mummy, or can I tell? Um, it's mummified, so you don't know for sure if it is a mummy. But um, let me check. Again, turn it on fire. I wonder if I can just say something like, "Wait, Guardian, we were just cleaning it for you." <laughs> <laughs> and if that doesn't sound good, I turn you. <laughs> And for the record, these are the mummified remains of a sacred offspring of Chip to Atlan, the guardian to the gateway of the underworld. Oh, be Just fun. because I wanted to tell you guys who and what it was. <laughs> well, damn. All right, Deglin. <laughs> uh, question, is there a reason why uh, everything on my character sheet's gone? Yeah, don't, if you would have been here, you would have known. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's not uh, everything on it's not everything on your character sheet. It's only the first page, but if you go to your inventory and everything, all of it's there. However, you cannot click anything because your character sheet won't work. So you can't attack from your character sheet or anything. So we have to manually roll the dice in the public dice roller on the chat. So if you have to roll an attack, you just roll a D20 and we add all your bonuses there and all that other stuff, so Basically, we're all cursed for this game. Yes, no we are all cursed for this game. And considering how many 90s I've rolled, I think that is true. <laughs> yep. All right, Deglin, actions? I'll, I'll pr probably try to turn him, but... Okay. thinking maybe I should say something. <laughs> all right, I need to look and see... Uh, yep, he is going to dart it. I'm going to do darts. We'll wait and see if we need to use spells later. Ronnie, actions? I'm going to bust out a cutlass on that undead beast. All right, Varus. I'm going to turn invisible and impact him. Dad kill actions. Yeah, um, if it looks aggressive, I guess I'm going to uh, uh, attack it if it's evil. Okay. Well, it's attacking you guys because you tried to steal its spear. So. Oh, my companions did. Yeah. Oh man. The dead have no need for spears. No, no bueno, man. Um. That kid looks sad upon that. In his pompous, on his pompous horse. 
<laughs> uh, uh, he's gonna he's going to if if the mummy attacks to hit somebody he's gonna attack it okay all right and there we have it so now let's begin our combat all right looks like it, it oh seriously hang on just a second again as the mummy gets the initiative it's totally weird it shows two people with initiative. Uh, okay I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna ask all right so as since Ronnie went to pull it away he targets Ronnie Let's see if I can going to roll what's Ronnie's armor class four he said yes four oh, that hits um yeah it needed a nine or better to hit want to see how many attacks it gets one okay uh oh no it gets yep it's just going to do the one spear attack because it's not using it has a chance to use either a spear or two hoof attacks and it just um blasts Ronnie nice. with the spear. Oops. You wanted the spear? You got it. Uh, two hit points of damage to Ronnie from the mummified centaur. <laughs> Deglin. I'm gonna uh try to turn it. So Okay. I think I got a roll for a mummy. It says seven. Yep. Seven? That's what it says. As you roll, as you call upon to, um, well, actually, tell me what you say. I say, by Jeskar's power, I bid thee stop and turn. The mummy looks at you and its teeth sort of, its face winds into sort of this, I don't know, corpsey looking, toothy, decayed grin as it, as it half smiles and one of its teeth sort of fall out to the side. And it just hisses at you as nothing happens. Barris, you are up. Well, that didn't work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Perplexed, Barris raises his flame tongue and runs towards the thing and says, By Tritheron, you should have turned! <laughs> Go ahead, move yourself. Uh, whoops, that's the uh, wrong button. <laughs> Let me roll that flame dog. <laughs> Need to move yourself up to where you are going to be so you can attack. Indeed. Thank you. Yep. Uh, as as you miss. Zad kill the righteous. It will help my group of thieves. I am actually well, going I, to put you. I'm sorry. I'm putting you in the room where you where you should be. That's where you were in the room. Mithindar was actually at the door, so I wanted to put you in the room, but I just never moved you because I got tired of moving you. Well, touch me again. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So I will. I will, uh, yeah, I'll, um, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. And I tell the mummy, stand down in the name of St. Cuthbert, for you are among holy people. Then he looks at whoever took the, touched the sword and winks. Here he goes. Rolling. That's eight twenty. It's armor class. Pretty sure that hits. Armor class three. That yeah, thirteen. Hit. Yep, that hits. I just need thirteen for that one. 
my damage. Okay, it's one, uh, one eight. That's seven. Total? Yes, sir. Okay. He goes, very well, I smite thee. As your blade slams into it, the creature, uh, the, the, um, yeah, the creature shudders um, from the force of the blow, letting out a hiss as a mouthful of dusty air sort of breathes out over everybody, spewing spores of who knows what from uh, days gone by over all of you. Varys, you are up. I slide my, uh, I slide my long sword out, my short sword in the cheese and turn it visible and turn it back down. Which I know I probably can't do this round. Right. So I wait. Okay. Ronnie No Blight, you are up. Eleven against armor 13. class three. That's 13 total? Yes. Alright. Okay. That hits. <laughs> you're, you're seventh low, right? Yes. Yep, that hits. Needed a 13 to hit. Seven, Seven points. The um... Nicely done. Ronnie, don't deal with no undead blight. Just checking to make sure. Okay. Yep, I was just double checking some. Okay. All right. It's so Mythendar. Targets him with darts. One hits, sixteen hits. Three hit points of damage. Nice. As we are to the top of the order again, actions, Barris. I am going to try and hit again. Deglin. I will be trying to smite him. Mythendar darts again. Ronnie, cutlass. I'm not going to cut less, DM. I'm going to cut more. Gotcha. Varus is backstabbing. Yes. And Zadkiel, sword again. I'm going to cut more, not less. Oh my god. Okie doke. <laughs> Use guys. Right. Use guys are so funny. Alright. We rolling it. Oh, as the mummy scores a six, and he goes. This time. His hooves are going to lash out. One at Barris, one at Ronnie. He does a split. <laughs> <laughs> and as he jumps, he jumps in the air and is... Hoo-bah! All right, let me double check if he gets a bonus. He's doing, a ja- he's doing the Jackie Chan move. Right? He thinks yeah. he is. See. There should be a chance that that leg breaks off. Yeah. First or that attack. we take a point from laughter. <laughs> Tell the rogue to grab his grab his horn between his legs. It's a horn. Get it. Twelve. Ronnie, what is your armor class? Four DM. So that hits. He needed a nine. So that hits. Ronnie suffers one hit point of damage as he gets grazed. Um, I need you to give me a saving throw versus poison, Ronnie. All right, 
will do. Holy shit, the hoes are poisoned? Believe that Who's stays. laughing now? Believe that that should be good, DM. Yep, you needed a seven or better. That is good. How'd you get a plus two on your saving throw? Well, I have a cloak of protection. I forgot and about that. Stone. Thank you for reminding me. All right. And I'm cheating. Got it. <laughs> That's the part that I wanted to hear as the second hoof. <laughs> 13. What is uh, your armor class again, Barris? Uh, three. Oh, class three, so that hits. Need a saving throw versus poison as you suffer four hit points of damage from the blow. But a flesh wound. Until mm. he gives you necrotizing fasciitis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think I have any bonuses here, so. You are a ranger. Yeah, seven. You save level. as a fighter. You need a ten or better. Uh, you got him a plus one. <laughs> What's that? I will give myself a plus one. Don't you have a cloak? Yeah, you should have a cloak. Uh, I'm working from an old uh, sheet. Um, let me check my character sheet online here. I thought you guys had a uh, a plus uh, one cloak. Sure yeah, I'm pretty sure he got a plus. one. Yeah. I know Ronnie's got one. No, yeah. I have the uh I have the Elven cloak. I don't it's not a Oh. I th I don't think that does anything for poison. Well no for saving throws. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Um I don't Elven I don't cloak see anything on. else in my inventory, nope. but uh nope. yeah, I'll you just I'll burn it. a plus one. Okay. So that leaves Barris with a plus one and a plus five. All right. He made your save. Oh, my eyes are starting to burn again. It's killing me. Barris, you're up. Stop poking your finger in it, DM. Can't help it. <laughs> Makes it feel better. All right. That hurt you, stupid dead horse. Take this. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Um, that hits armor class what? Uh, that hits armor class 5. Nope, he has armor class 3 as you miss. As your blade slams into it, unfortunately Wait, it does... Is he is he undead? Is he undead? Yes. Yeah. Considered undead. Oh, yeah, well I get a plus 4. Kapow! Kapow as you hit. And if he's a small medium, it's a 2 points. He's a large. Large is 4. 4 points. I take hey, your uh, and give it right back. <laughs> hey, coach, is he, um, I mean, sorry, sorry. Hey, DM, <laughs> is he, um, uh, is he, uh, evil? Uh, not, in a, not really. I mean, you can, I guess you could consider evil I'm because he is undead. Because he is undead. I will, I will say, yeah, we can consider it. It's just a, <laughs> he's a guardian placed here, so. I have, uh. So I think that people in my radius get a something. I'll double check what it is. Within a 10 foot radius, people get like a plus two or they get a minus two on attacks against them. Yeah. Something to that effect. All right. After that, we brings up Zadkiel, the righteous. Zadkiel goes. I have told you to be go. Which is, I made up that word. I told you to be gone. <laughs> be gone, beast. Go back to the depths of Hades. And he swings twice. You don't. First one misses. Second one, pretty close, probably. Uh, uh, it hits 13. Got 13 it. hits, yep. Oh, How that much? is 13. 13. 
as Zadkiel, calling upon the power of Cuthbert, slams into the mummified creature, cleaving through it, and suddenly, almost like a uh, a rag doll, its body, its hooves and, and its legs sort of collapse under it. It its head sort of collapses in on itself and it falls in a huge heap to the floor. <clears throat> I'm going to try guys... and catch the spear before it hits the deck, DM, just to show off my skills. Okay. And so you do. As you guys <laughs> manage to defeat the mummified creature. It impels your hand as you try to catch it. <laughs> I go. No, I'm well, trying to do it. you, friends. Be wary when trying to take things. We are here on a mission, but it's not a thievery. We must go the higher road. We're not here on a mission. We're surviving the uh, shit me and sunk. Exist. But the gods are always watching. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not hearing from the site. Well, technically, we're also running from a bunch of village people chasing us. <laughs> the village people? That's exactly what I said. <laughs> well, I mean, there was an Indian and, and there was a... <laughs> I think you're referring to us. The Batman, the Druid, and the Cleric. Right. Give these wild hand gestures and gyrations. We don't want to you. The medieval, like the medieval village people. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to look under where he was standing to see if there's any additional treasure. Like, in, in you this are area. one greedy okay. thief. I'm a thief, man. <laughs> He's got a broom and a dustpan. <laughs> 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 Um, while you guys are killing shit, I'm going to be over here checking this corner for some pennies. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and give a search of the uh, the mummified remains. Hey. There's two in my town. Uh, no, you find nothing. All right. Well, there's a door here. The spear Hello. itself is extremely heavy, by the way, Ronnie. It's probably about a good 100... 150 pounds. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. Well, I definitely can't wield that. It's made of metal, too. You can't yeah, it's made it. of metal. Let's, we can break off the tip and use that. I'm going to drop it into that guy's dusty remains. Okay. <laughs> totally worth it. <laughs> Right. Hmm. Oh, yeah, for traps. Okay. Come on. Answer him. Searching the door, you find no traps. It pulls inward into this chamber. Um, is there another stone door? No, there's only one door. No, is it stone? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's stone, just like the other door. Okay. Did anybody check up up here? No, not yet. You can. You want me to take a look? Yeah, just to see if there's any secret doors. Yeah. I, I did look. look up there. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. But I was unsuccessful. Well, I'm an elf, so I'll take a look. While sure. Varys is up there, I'm going to take a gold coin out of my pocket and lay it on the floor just to see if he notices okay. on his way back. All right. <laughs> uh, Varys, you find no secret doors in your search up there. All right. Atlas empty. Oh, hey. <laughs> awesome <laughs> how did that get there <laughs> and Varys does notice the gold coin on the floor <laughs> Ooh, I will uh, slide a hand in go ahead and give me a <laughs> give me a pickpocket stroll <laughs> that was actually really good for me oh I made that I made it Yep, right. as you I have the roll. 
I have to roll to make sure he doesn't see me snickering. <laughs> As you guys all watch. <laughs> As Varus is now one gold coin richer and is the brunt of everybody's inner laughter. It's all right. More for me. Yeah, I'm going to get a little bit. But the door itself remains. Uh, do you, you want to open this main stone, Jay? Okay. It opens inward, so uh, I'm going to have my sword ready in case something okay. comes okay. out. So I try to open the door. Pulling the door open reveals a flight of stairs leading down into uh, a chamber uh, with cracked stone floor. There appear to be two large fountains of some kind. Um... But what they are from here, you can't really tell. Uh, check the traps on the here. Okay. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> Is that another gold coin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You find no traps, and as you proceed down, you see this room is small and plainly decorated. To the west, where you're coming at, stairs lead up and out of the room, and to either side of the stairs along the west wall are narrow, dust-covered ledges. In the north and south ends of the room, i.e. the left and right as you're looking at it, are fountains made of bronze inlaid marble. The southern right. one meaning the one to your right, is cracked and dry uh, with only limey deposits remaining in whatever the fountain used to spout. The one on your left contains, um, uh, 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 is full of brackish water. The fountain itself you can see is about two feet, three, well, about three feet high. Um, as you, So about waist high, um, both of them. The one on the right is mostly just sort of lime filled um, and, and dry. There's, you don't see any water in it from your vantage. Mm -hmm. The one on the left is full of water, but it, the water comes up to about a foot below the lip. So it's probably about at least two feet of water if the water went to the floor. If it goes below the floor, then it's obviously deeper. But at least mm -hmm. two foot of water in the one on the left. Um, anyway, the, the, the northern fountain contains a couple of feet of brackish water fed by a limey trickle. Um, in the white gauzy form, uh, or, or in the white, uh, which is on the limey on the right hand side, um, the a gauzy form of a crayfish uh, lies in the bed and it looks like, like the crayfish was there and it maybe died. Um, and then over time, this sort of trickle of water and now lime uh, have been soaking over it and now it's sort of made it this lime encrusted shape of a crayfish embedded into the fountain on the right um it doesn't show it but right here in the middle of the east wall uh, on the floor um you can see a square pewter basin about five feet wide covers a stone wellhead uh, in other words there's some kind of a well underneath it um but there's a pew uh, a stone block kind of sitting on top of that so, like, if water were to spew out of there, it would sort of run off underneath the bottom of the basin into the floor because it doesn't quite seal it at the bottom, which is why you can see. Um, but sort of like a drain, like if, if it was whatever. It kind of makes sense? Yep, yep, okay. Well, um, what do you want to do? You want, you want to look around and see if there's any other doors or exits? I'd like to, DM, I can identify if that's pure water or not. So I want to look at it and scope that out. Check the out water the water itself quality. is, the water itself is old and brackish. Um, it is not fresh, nor is the lime um, that on the right hand one. It's, it's all, and Ronnie, you know that you have to be very careful because lime, this looks to be very fresh, pure type of lime. 
so you know that it could eat through your flesh rather quickly if you aren't careful if you play in lime very much. But the water itself looks brackish and nasty. Not very fresh. Probably could be purified, but not very fresh. Well, it just started pouring hard, so if I disappear, you know what it's from. Oh, yeah? Okay. We had ours earlier today. All right. Well, DM, I'm a curious fellow, and I've been carrying around this mimic tongue. Okay. And so I would like to place the mimic tongue in that lime on the right and just leave it there okay to confound any people in the future i like it as you place it in there it sort of settles into the lime the lime itself is a little kind of mushy it's still it's kind of moist so you can tell there's still faint faint traces of water probably feeding this thing but not enough to fill it up with water just to kind of leave it brackish so you're able to kind of push it down in there almost like a mold excellent what to now um you know, um, play with the fountain or Search for secret doors. Yeah, that was what I was gonna look. I was gonna look up their DM and look and see if it was like purified water coming through that fountain up at the or that basin at the north end, or whatever end that is. Yeah. No. So up here is this is east, where the room below is is west. Obviously, this is south, and on the left is north. And I know there's no map. That's why I'm not trying to avoid east, west, north, south and just say left, right. Um, the basin itself, there's no real water in it. Um, it is dry, but it's a stone basin that is just sort of set in um, almost like a, a, a an offset manhole cover, right? So it's like a manhole cover that sits over this drainage. Um, and so the basin probably used to have some kind of water in it of some kind, um, but you're not. 100% sure because now it's dry but it just covers up this um, drain below it. Well, if there's no other exit out of this room continue what I want to go. Well, I'm thinking I'm going to go search for yeah. a secret door in that corner, DM. I I'm, like I'm to search for secret doors. Okay. Anyway. Because we normally do that when we don't see an exit. Okay. Can we all search? Yeah. No, uh, I have a better chance to be an elf. Yeah, you do. And so does Ronnie as an elf. The Seahawk game is a barn buster from the <laughs> looks of it. Yeah. Um, you guys find no secret doors. Well, I guess that leaves us that room back there at the entrance in the hallway with the with the twisty thing. Yeah, oh. we, or we hit that out. <laughs> oh, do um, you, do you want to count this? Or leave it alone. Or you can move the 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 yeah, stone wanna... cover is where uh, where you're at, Ronnie. That that can be moved as well, right? It's just like a sort of a little stone block sitting down in it. So oh, that can be moved as well. Yeah, it's like a drain, like a manhole cover, only it's a it's a little stone block basin. Well, Ron, Ronnie's going to move out of the way for one of these big beefy fellows. I could lift it, but let's have Varys check it for traps. Yeah, I'll take a look. No whammy. No whammy. There, there you go. Yeah, you find That's no good. find no traps. Well, save to me, my friend. All right. I'll see if I can lift it and slide it to the side. Easily. You move it, slide it to the side, and it reveals a round hole about four foot around that drops down into 
what appears to be some kind of a dry pipe of some kind, about five feet wide, leading off to the south. Now, do you want to tie them up to a fountain or spray it to a wall or, or we just want to it only drops it, it only drops down about ten feet, so Oh, okay, then we can probably just um take one lower us down and jump down or whatever. Yeah. A ten foot uh, drop. Yeah, I'll I'll jump down and then first and some okay. kind of information. Our yep. body. Oh, now I'll go down first and look for any potential enemies. Okay. You drop down, like I said, about eight to ten feet or so. Um, in, you're in some kind of a, a dry tunnel. Um, looks like at one point maybe it had water feed or a, some kind of a drainage of some kind, but now it is, is dry. Um, but you can see that the the it's sort of a dirt tunnel um, that twists and turns leading off into the distance. Okay. Well... Oh, well, sorry, it's a twisting tunnel in into the distance. Maya once had water, so we'll have to be careful. Is it big enough to stand in? Um, yeah, you can have you have to be hunched down a little bit, but or hunched together because it is rather narrow. It's only like about three feet wide, so you have to go single file. Single file, yeah. Well, you probably have to bend over if you're tall. I'm. I'm. Pretty tall for an elf. Yeah. I'm cool. No, no. Actually, I'm pretty small for an elf. Only five six. Um, I'm cool as long as we ain't got to squeeze through any tights. Yeah, just gotta do single file. So decide a marching order. All right. So you're already down there. So. Yep. Yep. Let me go down next, and then maybe have. uh, Paladin come down after that to push my ass tight spot so we get it to <laughs> Be careful the shyster monster. The shyster monster. Isn't that an od odic? How do you say it? Hang on just a second, I'm looking at something here. All right, so Varus is going first. Varus is first, and then I'm. I guess. Okay. Who's after? Uh, who's after that? It really doesn't. I guess. It does I to think me. The suggestion was uh, Zadkiel. Um, but All right. So. Either way. Varus, Deglin, Zadkiel. Who's after Zadkiel? Oh, Ronnie will hop in there. Okay. Right. Ronnie, Mithindar, and then Barris. Sure. All right. As you guys. Okay. So let's do. I just want to put your order here so we know. All right. Now that we know which we're going. Okay. You begin to move your way through this tunnel. I'm going to double check and make sure where the out where it comes out of. Um, okay. I see where it comes out now. All right. So as you move past, you see that there's a small little branch that sort up uh, on your left, um, oops, on your left, Varus. <laughs> Isaac, are you move. moving us or are you? Uh, uh, yeah, no, I I was moving you just so I could keep everybody on oh. track. So okay. Um, so Varus, you move down about ten or fifteen feet in, and there's a small little branch kind of going upwards off to your left, but it disappears in darkness, um, and it gets very very narrow. Um, so probably something along the size of a gnome or, or maybe a dwarf could, could fit up there. Um, but anything larger, it's going to be a little struggle if you guys try to go that route. 
Continuing on. I need somebody to roll me a six-sided dice, please. I didn't roll that. I well, I know, but I I rolled it because I was. Oh. Okay. I, I had. <laughs> I had I have you if the dungeon master has any token selected it rolls as that token so ah, I had you right. selected when I moved you so so somebody else want to give me a All right Nice And why don't I have that <sighs> Do 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 All right that was you know what's not winch you say? I'm not in the hole. Ah, son of a no. Oh, of course. <laughs> Fracking arachnids. Why did it have to be arachnids? <laughs> Alright. Actions, although the only people that can get to it at all are Varus, Deglin, and Zadkiel, and everybody attacks at a minus two. Can I use my shield and just smush it? Uh, like a boot? <laughs> it's very difficult to maneuver in here um, with moving your shield and trying to attack with a mace. Um, that's why everybody is attacking at a minus two. So I only really, even though everybody's in combat, I'm actually going to take the rest of the, the guys out. Um, remove. I was going to whisper fireball over Mithrandar's ear. Oh! <laughs> uh, that's a plan <coughs> all right so ferris actions elf ferris oh um seven. okay uh Since i can't really pass it. yeah deglin see so i can't use my mace you can use your mace, but you're at a minus. Everybody's at a minus two to hit, just because oh. of the. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna try to hit it. Okay. Zad kill. Yeah, I'm gonna try to hit it. Okay. All right. Let me see what it's. Uh... <clears throat> I need to make sure what its stats say. How big is? Um, it is a large creature. Son of a bitch. It is considered a... Actually, it says a huge, but it's a large creature. Um, and it's... But it's not like that tough, so... It has that many hit points, so let me... So yeah. I just want to squish it. That'll work. It's squishy! Wait, what does this armor class say here? Okay, that'll work. All right, it's armor class is five, by the way. Mm. And oh, I did it again! Damn it! All right, party gains initiative. Varus, you're up. All right. Seven minus two. Yes. Only add one instead of three. Ooh, that hits. Fifteen should hit. Armor. Said, hits armor he class said, five. He says one? Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> no. I like it. Give me a chance at least. Nice. Really as, you, nice <laughs> as, as, you, as you manage to poke at it slightly as it it's claw it's fought it's pause it's fangs and it's its feet are sort of stabbing at you guys trying to attack zad kill the righteous you are up yes i will i will attack it you don't 13 plus 2 plus 1 is 15 well, actually you get a plus 1 for your strength right no, I get plus two for my strength. All right, plus two for... St I thought you were a plus one, plus three. No, I'm 18, 57. I'm plus oh, two. Oh, okay. Plus three. Okay, so you get plus two for strength, plus two for your sword. That's a plus four, so that's a 17. Minus two is a 15, right? You're right. All right, so 15 hits. Okay, it's a large creature? Or it small? is a large creature. 
Oh, sweet. Nice. Six plus two plus three. Eleven. Eleven. Nice. As you manage to impale right into its maws, it squeals in pain and hisses. Deglin, you are up. Damn bug smash! <laughs> Negative two to hit, but I get five. Eleven should hit. Eleven should hit. Oh, let's double check. A third level cleric. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need a ten or better hit. Plus, I get all my strength. Yep. You smush it. Oh Twelve snap! Yeah. Yeah, that was quick. Smush the spider. I hate spiders. <laughs> ah, that was quick and easy. Spider-Man. Spider A Spider-Man? Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> A manly spider. Uh, nothing. Uh, okay. Um, go ahead and give me a... Give me a search check. Everybody? Yeah, whoever wants to search. Who's that kill? So, unfortunately, um, if there is a nest up there, it's going to take an extremely long time to get to it because it is so small and so tight. Um, you guys might be able to, if you strip down all of your gear and got out of your yeah. armor and stuff and climbed up there, you might be able to get to the nest, but unfortunately it is so small and with the spider itself blocking, um, extremely difficult, if not impossible right now, to get to it. Is there any way to go this way? Yeah, or? it continues. That, yeah, it doesn't show it on the map, but you guys, uh, the, the tunnel does continue forward, and I'll move you guys. All right. Um, it actually, you get right... Ah, oh, dang it, wrong map. <laughs> you guys, as you move, you get to right here. Although you're not outside in this room, you guys are underneath in the tunnel. As you're just aware. I could use my shape shifting skills, guys, to get up there if we wanted to waste it. Oh no, I'll save it. We can always if we <laughs> come back, we can worry about it. Yeah, save it. We'll it's waste it on yeah. something else. Yep. Yep. Alright, I'm almost done cleaning up this mess. Alright, no big deal. Alright. So, I am going to read the description of this room, and it is rather large, so just be aware. If somebody wants to... Hang on, I'm going to remove the drawings from... Somebody else wants to move and put the east, west, north, south somewhere at the top of the map, like up here or something like that for me, while I read. This room is decorated with a bizarre diorama depicting the land of the dead. Small, brightly painted clay statues have been placed about the room to represent the inhabitants of this realm and the unfortunate men and women they have under their care. In the center of the room, the floor rises to form a small hill with earthen palisades on its north face. A group of small men figures seem to be struggling to roll a boulder up the hill while a devil drives them on. Above the hill in the ceiling is a glowing spot which illuminates the entire room with an eerie silver light. A pebble path leads from the door of the room to the, uh, to the foot of the hill. 
Before the door in the western end of the room is a region which depicts burning sands. There, there, devils torture men who have been unfortunate enough to fall into their hands. On the south side of the path is a region fenced off by a hedge of thorns depicting a grassy plain where men frolic and hunt antelope and deer. South of the hill, the floor opens into a model canyon down which flows a river of lava while flames etch the walls. East of the hill, in the side wing of the room, is a counterpart to this fiery canyon, an icy waste. To the north of the hill are putrid, bubbling marshes where figures of men strive to keep their heads above the surface. Out of this swamp, a black, torpid river wends its way around past the northern edge of the hill and flows past to pour over the lip of a stream-filled chasm in the northwest corner of the room. Within this dark chasm, worms, uh, worms pursue fleeing forms of naked men and women. In the south corner of this room, on the eastern wall, is a barred door. So, down here in the south, uh, actually, yep, north, sorry, here there is a barred door of some kind. There's a door here leading out. This, um, here you have a river of lava. Here you guys have this ice. Um, over here you have marshes and you guys are climbing out of the center of the top of this hill this hill is actually about 10 feet above the floor but it slopes sharply downward to each side so you guys can see the various corners of the room so like I said um, here over here is a um, you have these thorn hedges and a grassy plain so over here, there are men hunting and uh, antelope and deer. Um, south of the hill, it opens into a model canyon down which flows a river of lava. So here, this river of lava flows into this canyon part of the diorama. Um, up here is the icy waste. And up here are these putrid... Uh, marshes where figures of men strive to keep their heads above the surface um, and like I said there's this sort of this black torpid river if you can call it that sort of this sludgy river flows past the lip of a stream filled chasm in the northwest corner of the room up here um, and you can see that there are figures of people in this area up here being pursued by worms through the muddy sludge so that's kind of the basic description and that's where we are going to leave it for about 15 minutes while we take a break and I can refresh my juice and I can make sure that I know what's going on in this room because I told you I'm rather unprepared this week. I thought I had all the maps set but apparently I didn't. So at least it'll give me a chance to catch up and make sure that I got what's going on in this room all together. Should you guys have any questions but in the meantime as I said we're going to move to a break um where's our break at let's do that and we are going to uh, i'm going to pause this music first um as we pause that and we are going to listen to the smooth silky sounds of monkey boogers for those that haven't been out to check out monkey boogers site i encourage you to do so um let me set our timer here i usually keep it up but for whatever reason i closed it earlier there we are. And like I said, we're going to do a 15 minutes. And hopefully you guys will come back and be here when we get back. In the meantime, um, yeah, let's uh, let's kind of just hang out for a little bit and relax. Go get yourself something to drink. Get a beverage of choice. Get a snack. And uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. So don't forget, we're still accepting applications for Nat 1s and Nat 20s. So all you have to do is drop 3,000 of your tokens that you garner as you're watching our stream um, or for every 100 bits you can grant a plus one to your favorite player or dm we don't want to we don't exclude any hard work and dm out there so we'll be back in a few minutes folks thanks for hanging out
and we are back. Let me see if I can't figure out how to do this. There we are. Needed to close out the uh, the monkey boogers. Um, it has like a pop-up window that I have to run. So I appreciate everybody. <laughs> Who's a bearded chap in the playlist? I don't know. I wish I knew. But hey, man, welcome everybody back. I appreciate you hanging out with us as we took our little bit of a break as our party continues to meander their way through this underground temple maze place that they have stumbled into in the middle of the Amedio jungle as they were on the run from those of the Scarlet Brotherhood and slavers and anybody else who wanted to get their dirty little claws on our party as well as um, those who hired them. But like I said, appreciate you guys hanging out with us over that break. Um, if you have just joined us, um, welcome. Um, if you've been sticking with us, I definitely appreciate that. Once again, don't forget to hit that like or follow. Um, hit the little alerts. Make sure that you know when we're streaming every Monday, every other Friday. This Friday is a stream week, so hopefully you'll catch our 5e game as our party on that group um, uh, is heavily involved with trying to clear the name of one of their players. They're one of their characters, Nilo. Her family has fallen upon some hard times because of deeds done by her sister, and they are trying to unravel the mystery of what the heck is going on and why her sister did what she did, or did she do what she did? Is it is that really what's going on? You're going to have to tune in to find out. If, uh, if you have tokens, um, I encourage you to burn them now as our party... Uh, always can use nat ones and nat twenties. Um, if you want to show some real love, uh, feel free to cheer. For every one hundred bits cheered, you can give a plus one to any die roll. Um, not really a plus one; it's plus or minus one, depending upon if they need. Like for example, if uh, the uh, the thief is trying to check for traps and they really think it's important, and he misses it by one, if he wants to use one of his one plus ones, he can actually subtract one from his roll. Stuff like that, right? So, but like I said, for every 100 bits you cheer, you can add plus one to to a player of your choice or your humble DM. Um, those do not; uh, those do get carried um, over and over uh, between sessions. So, if you give them a plus one, they can carry it from now at infinity um, if they never want to use it. Um, but they have found reason enough to need that little bump of a plus one or a plus two here or there. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, but anyway, welcome back, players. I, uh, I'm i glad. I hope everybody had a decent break. I hope you were able to get done everything that you needed to do. I hope you reloaded your um, stuff. Uh, got your favorite beverage of choice. Me, uh, it's uh, one of these Gatorade thingies that I drink. Uh, so, yeah, I got mine. Hopefully you got yours. Got my... One of my favorite snacks, my goldfish. I am, I love fish, um, and what better way to eat fish than when they're gold? Um, but unfortunately, uh, no, the thief cannot have my goldfish. Um, so he's, he wants everybody else's gold, but he is not getting my goldfish. So like I said, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us, and welcome back. Party, let me go through this description, albeit uh, briefly once again. You guys are standing, well, you're not standing yet. Y'all are still kind of... In the tunnel beneath this, there's a opening that um, uh, Varus is able to climb up to that leads into this chamber that you guys have moved from the water chamber now into this. It's basically a huge room that's made up like a diorama. Um, the hill you're on, I said before, is like 10 feet high. It's not even close to that. It's only a couple feet maybe three feet at most. It's sort of a rolling little hump in the middle of this of this room. But it is part of the diorama. And you guys, or Varus, you sort of poked your head up into the middle of this as you look around. So as I said, the room is a like a bizarre diorama depicting the land of the dead. Um, you can see brightly plate painted clay statues have been placed about the room indicating... Um, uh, th they represent the inhabitants of the land of the dead and the unfortunate men and women who are suffering beneath the the wrath of the owners and leaders of the land of the dead, the demons, if you will, that run the land of the dead. Um, in the center of the room, the floor rises into a small hill with earthen palisades on the north side. So on this side over here, 
where the water is kind of flowing like a river, um, there's just sort of these steep kind of slopes leading down into it. Um, a group of small men figures seem to be struggling to roll a boulder up the hill uh, toward you. So they're toward the bottom of the hill here um, and over here, and they're trying to roll these boulders up a hill driven by a demon behind them. Um, directly above you in the ceiling is a glowing spot which illuminates the entire chamber with this kind of this eerie silverish light. Um, at the base of the hill, there is a pebble path. This pebble path leads um, to the um, uh, west, to a, a door in the west. Um, and um, on either side of it, you can see there are other parts of the diorama. Um, right here, on the the as you're looking down on the northern side of this pebble path are these burning sands it's sort of like a it reminds you of the sands that you saw when you were traipsing through the bright desert this very bright bright sands they call them burning sands because they almost glow almost like a fire um you can see devils there torturing men who have been unfortunate enough to fall into their hands on the south side of the path is a region fenced off by hedges and thorns. That's over here. You can see this region is fenced off by uh, hedges and thorns. And there's a small, it looks like a, a plains, like like the Plains Indians, right? So it has this, uh, this rolling plains diorama. And you see men out hunting deer and antelope, uh, etc. Um, to the... Um, south, directly south from the hill, you can see there is this diorama of a canyon of some kind um, that a river of lava sort of flows into it and etches the walls um, of the canyons. East of the hill, uh, in a side wing of the room, uh, is, is a counterpart to the fire. So on the east side behind you, you can see that there is a diorama of a icy wasteland. Uh, to the north, which is back the way you came, you can see that there is this putrid sort of marshy uh, land, bubbling marshes where figures of men strive to keep their heads above the surface. And out of the swamp itself flows a black torpid river that winds its way past the edge of the hill and flows into and over the lip of a uh, stream-filled chasm in the northwest corner of the room. So there's this sort of this, it's almost like a little mini waterfall. This is a drop down of a couple feet and into this pool um, of this uh, um, of this chamber or the, there's a sort of a, a pool in the, the south, uh, the northeast corner, I'm sorry, northwest corner. It's like I'm looking at the map. It's like I'm, I get twisted too. So anyway, in this corner, there's a sort of this where the waterfall flows into and forms this pool of water. And you can see that in this dark chasm, worms pursue the fleeing forms of naked men and women. Um, and then uh, in the very um, uh, edge of the room here, you can see that there is another door um, leading out. So there's two doors. There's a set of double doors along the west wall. And along the east wall, you can see that there are uh, there is a door there as well. But that's all you can kind of see as you kind of poke your head and, and look around, Varys. That's the the vision that you are able to see before you climb up out of this place. Well, what would we like to do, my friend? So we're only getting this second hand from him, right? Yeah, no, you guys. I'm trying to climb you, out. Yeah. Oh, you climb out. Um, I mean, do we want to climb out? Or no, I'm just, I'm just asking because I know right now you're just looking out. Everybody yeah. else is in the tunnel behind you, and so uh, I don't see, I don't see anything, right? No, no, just, just these diorams. Yep. Yeah, sure, I'll step out. Okay, um, give me a saving throw versus magic. Oh, of course. Didn't I have some bonuses. Just in case. I have 
plus four, and magic is uh, death magic. Or are you talking just just spells? magic like spells? Sorry, spells. spells. Okay. Yep, sorry. Yep, yep. DM, while he's making a save for his life out there because he left the tunnel, I'm going to eat a date. Okay. All right. So. Oh, I fail. All right. I need to double nice check. Nice date, this. me I want to double check on this spell just to be sure because I don't necessarily know if there was a save and if there was what actually happens to make sure. Uh -huh. I'm an elf. I'm immune to charm. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's not a charm or anything. Somewhere in here. I don't think incinerate has a savings throw. Yeah, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm pretty sure disintegration uh, doesn't. Uh, it's all right. I have, I have invites to other games, so you're going to kill me off. All right. I, I might, don't even, I don't might, even know what this spell is. Be mean to me. Lion player. Yep. Give me a second here. I gotta. I apologize. What's it? Like I said, I'm not. I was not prepared as as I thought I was for this. So let me. I know it's magic user. Well, I mean, I have a next twenty to use if I really need it. Yeah. <laughs> Off it'll be. Interesting. I didn't need to make a save. I'm fine. Yo, yo. <laughs> I mean, I basically know. There it is. Okay, it, it is first level. That's what I thought. Okay. So it's not that it's not that big of a thing, but I just needed to see okay. what the uh, what the actual effect said if you failed. So, um, I just I don't know my alphabet. So there, see that's why. Um. So, as you stand up on this hill um, and Deglin begins to clamber his way out, suddenly you feel as if somebody pushes you, Varys. It's almost as if somebody's hands get put on you like um, a force of some kind and push you. And I need you, if you would... No, um, no. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Uh, oh, actually, they actually, it, we don't have to, I apologize. You don't have to do a save versus magic. What I need you to do is roll 2d6 and roll a four or less. Oh, somebody gave me another net 20. Thank you so much. What? What? How come yeah. nobody ever gives me nat 20s? Or me. Uh, let's see. Oh, Excel. Who did you give the nat one to? I didn't even see. Excel gave a nat one. I think it was to you. But I All right. I uh, I'm not you sure. Know. Lando, did you? Yeah. Uh, was it to me? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. All you right. Know, so I got a nat one, yeah. and Varus has. Yeah. Thanks, man. I didn't even see that. So I have. Let me yeah. see, really. Nat no, one, and nat Varus 20. has a nat twenty. Uh, two All right. Uh, yep. I, I think Varus keeps logging in his other names on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. If only. If only. Yep. I'm, exactly. I'm a mod for another <laughs> streamer. So I like it. That's that probably not showing him well. I dig it. All right. So get roll two d six, and you have to roll a four or less. Four or less. Well, let's see or else. Or else. Mm. Uh, no. Nope. Nope. As you, uh, you still failed. Ha ha ha. So as I said, it feels almost as if uh, uh, somebody's hands get placed upon you and they shove you. Now we just need to go north, south, east, or west. One, two, three, four, north, south, east, west. West. So you get pushed and you get shoved as you move down, as you move on the hill. Oh, where is it at? Why is it not doing that? Okay. You get shoved um, down the hill and you slip and slide trying to hold yourself. But the, the it's almost like the grass is a little bit moist or damp, making it slick. And you slide all the way down the hill and go plunging. And you find yourself standing in the sand at the base of the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, you stop. Huh. 
nothing nothing appears well nothing seems to have happened just seems if you slid down the hill into the sand <laughs> Deglin are you uh, coming up after him well I poke my head up and try to see where he went you see that he slides down the hill I ask him if he's okay uh, I'm okay, but some kind of magical force pushed me down the hill. Can, can so, you walk? Deglin, um, Deglin, as you look, you see that Varys doesn't look well. It looks like he's got blood coming from his nose. Hey, uh, you, you got something on your face there. <laughs> as, as you wipe your face, sure enough... Varys, you have a bloody nose, and it's coming out rather heavily as you suffer one hit point of damage. I know. Try, try to get back up here. Yeah, I'll come up the hill. Okay. Go ahead and move yourself back up the hill. Okay. And he was able to do that. Yeah, he was able to slowly walk his way back up the hill. Um, as you get up, the, the, the bloody nose starts to dry up ah. and you suffer one more hit point of damage before it stops well um there's definitely some magic creeping stuff going on here I need you to roll 2d6 for me Ferris this time you're ready for it and you brace your feet you slide perhaps five feet down toward the south, just to the edge of where the flame place is. But mm, you manage to catch yes. yourself, and you're able to yes. hold yourself before you move any further. But you can feel the force upon you. All right. Uh, it's time to leave. <laughs> yeah. You the, magic, the magic don't like me, and it's trying to toss me in the dangerous places. Yeah, um, you want to try to go to that room to the uh, above? On the door up here? Yeah, or do you want to go down to the double gates at the bottom? Well, um... This looks fairly safer. Yeah, but it's near all the spire. Yeah. I don't really want to fall in the lava, but... Maybe if we tied each other off and tell each other so we wouldn't... Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to use the ten foot pole as a walking stick. Okay. And trying to use it to help me go this way, I guess. Okay. As soon as you get off the hill, the force sort of fades and you no longer feel the force on you. Alright, it's something to do with the hill. Be careful when you step out. Uh, Don't fail your save. <laughs> Don't do what I do. Daglin? Yeah, well, I, I don't want to get pushed off the hill and go get a nosebleed or go into the fire, so I'm trying to figure out what the hell to do. Okay. Um, you want to spell magic? I do have to spell magic, but I don't know if it's powerful. Yeah, might not, yeah, might not. Might need a couple of them. I don't know. I'm thinking tie myself off to the other guys that are in the tunnel. And uh, once I go out, if I get pushed, hopefully they'll be able to keep me going, you know, over to the side into the fire or into the ice. That makes sense? Yeah, I mean, have a tag kill hold on to you. <laughs> yeah, have a tag kill hold on to me, and once I'm tied off, we can all just chain link our way down off the hill towards can, going to the top. Can you throw Varus uh, a rope? I mean, from the back, I can't see what's going on, but could he anchor a rope, and then we could anchor one here, and then just sort of use it to hold on to? You can try that, too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could use a spike. So I'll try to throw him the rope without coming out of the hole. Okay. Easy enough. Have him spike that rope down there below the hill. 
Yeah, here's my hand to the wall. Yeah, okay. at some point. All right, and then come up out of the thing and see if I can. Okay. Roll 2d6. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As you step out, suddenly this force slams into you taking you off your feet flipping you up in the air as you grab a hold of the rope and you slam down onto the uh, onto the ground okay as you suffer oop that should have been a minus two suffer one hit point of damage as the wind is knocked from your lungs give me a dexterity check please roll a d20 dexterity check You need to roll under your dexterity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he meant. What? Yeah. As you slam, as you slam into the ground. Uh, let's see. That was north, south, east. So you're flowing this way. As you slam into the ground right here. You, the wind gets knocked out of your lungs and you're like, Ugh! as a reaction, you just sort of kind of clench yourself, releasing the rope as you get shoved onto the little icy patch. Wait, no, we were tied off on the... Oh, I thought you were holding onto the rope. No, no, no. Tied okay, off. I'll allow that then. I'll allow that then. As you get pushed down this way and it stops you just as you're getting to the icy patch, you manage to catch yourself hugging the wall. And as soon as you get, <laughs> soon as you get off the base of the hill, the force on you stops. Woo. Watch it, this, this, guys. That's like a doozy. Air elemental or something. This is like very elemental. You got fire, air, water, earth. Only we have Ronnie to pick any of this up. You don't know. You're not out there. You haven't seen anything. Well, he's seeing through the eyes of the other guys. Yep, if only we had a druid that knew something about air, earth, fire, and water. I know a lot about squirrels, DM. Zad Kiel. <laughs> yeah. Your turn as you climb up out of the hill and stand up to see what your friends were talking about. Tied off arm to the rope. Suddenly, you're only there for a second or two when you feel this force sort of push into you i need you to give me 2d6 please what am i rolling for damage no had you been listening you would know whether or not you fail your save and get pushed along the way 2d6 2d6 you have to get a four or less Oof. Similar to go. similar to Deglin. As you your feet get lifted from beneath you as the rope grabs you and your feet give way as you slip, flipping up in the air, landing, slamming onto the ground. Fortunately, however, you take no damage from the uh from the fall. But you do get pushed back the fire. Da back down the hill and you oh, get okay. caught right before you enter into the marshy lands so now you have to figure how you're going to get off of the hill and join your friends without getting pushed again well crawl crawl, to, crawl to me i'm going to uh Can we pull him with the rope too? Suppose you could. Start pulling it back towards us. I'm going to just um uh, hmm. guess crawl. Okay. As you crawl, you feel the force once again pushing on you. Give me a two D six 
Roll, please. I roll for damage. No. As you once again feel yourself getting pushed in a random direction by this force. This time, however, you get pushed toward your friends as they pull you to safety. As soon as you get off the hill, you manage to... Or I should say, you, you the force is no longer pressing on you, and you find yourself standing among friends. Have I have I ever felt this kind of force before? No, it's some kind of a magical force of some kind pressing on you. Yeah. As. Oop, as he suffers one. As Mythendar, just like the rest of you, he gets up and he tries to move quickly, but before he can, his feet give out from underneath him as the force slams into him, picking his feet up, and he um, slams hard into the ground, suffering one hit point of damage. And moves in a random direction. Two, as he is pushed directly into you guys. Just as he's about ready to fall into the fire, you guys, Zadkiel manages to grab him and pull him off into safety. Ronnie, you're up. I'm ready. Give me your 2d6 as you emerge from the hole. Quickly trying to join your friends. As you fail. Run! (laughs) As you slam into the ground, but fortunately you don't have any real heavy stuff on you and therefore you suffer no damage. And like your friends, you manage to make it to the to the bottom of the hill and feel no force as they pull you to safety fortunately the push that happened on your body pushed you in the direction of your friends as opposed to away barris let's see if we can't get you into the fire yeah so i've got my rope i'm gonna tie my i'm gonna make a harness i'm gonna put my carabiners on it and, <laughs> and hook myself to the rope and just shimmy Okay. Mission Impossible style. <laughs> 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 oh, so close. Almost. Almost. Almost had it. No. <laughs> As you slam into the ground, suffering no damage. Oh, as you get pushed back down the hill, they stop you right before you get into the marshlands. All right. Uh, I'm going to give it another go. All right. As you try to run, go ahead and give me your 2d6. (laughs) So close. As you get suddenly your feet once again out from underneath you. As you suffer two hit points of damage. As this time as you slammed on your chest, slamming your shoulder onto the hard packed ground. But, fortunately, whatever the force is that's pushing you guys pushes you directly to your friends. And you all manage to get off the hill. Alright. We may have just boxed ourselves in, though, so that might be a problem. Uh... (laughs) You want to check that room out? I guess we're here. We might as well... (laughs) Okay. Have a look. All right. Uh, checking door for traps. Okay. You find no traps upon this door. Uh, is it locked? It is not. Just a uh, solid stone door, just as always. Uh, draw my long sword and let Daylin open it. All right. Okay. 
you drag the door with a heavy creaking, groaning, scraping sound. Beyond this door is a small room. Opposite the door in the southeast corner, over here, is a small shelf on which rests a glazed flask. The floor of this room is covered in a lumpy pile of earthy material. In the northwest and northeast corners, up here and up here, so basically in each corner of the room except the room where the door is, in the northwest and northeast corner are two more shelves on which rest a small urn and a small stone cylinder respectively. So here we have a flask. Here we have an urn, and here we have some kind of a cylinder. Hey, that's the floor? Yeah, the floor itself is kind of a lumpy pile of earth material. It's not stone, it's like earthy looking, spongy kind of lumpy material that cover almost like, um, like I don't want to say moss, but like a uh, manure or or something like that right just sort of this lumpy kind of material of some kind like freshly dug earth Ooh. Ooh. yeah does it look like it's freshly dug earth or, or dry um, lava? no no it looks i don't know it, it's just it's strange looking it, it it's just sort of this lumpy material of some kind uh, i take my 10 foot pole and poke it Okay. It's rubber mulch. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're able to poke into it. Um, this, the material doesn't appear to be like loose earth of any kind. It's just, it appears to be one solid mass of lumpy material. Does it look solid or soft? Um, it looks soft. Hmm. I see in front of mulch. <laughs> I'd like to smell that lumpy earth DM. Yeah, come Marty, come take a look at this. Okay. Oh, uh, swamp places me. Yeah, I'd like to smell that lumpy dirt and see how it smells. If necessary, I'd you know put my hands in there and feel give it me, around. Give me a um give me an intelligence check. Please, Ronnie, roll a 20-sided dice and pair to your intelligence. I made it. This does not look like Earth to you at all. It looks almost like a flesh-type material. It's almost as if the floor is a living thing of some kind. Oh, boy. All right, I let the guys know, hey, that that's alive. Hmm. We might need to go in there stabbing. Do we really need to go get that flask? Do we see any writing anywhere? Can we make out any details on the, the items? Uh, no, there's no... You don't see any writing or, or hieroglyphics or anything in this room. What the hell are they? Do we even want a chance, it, guys? Or do we just want to try to go out the double doors to the, to the below? I think we ought to put some meat shields up here and start stabbing that floor. Let me move Ronnie out of the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got no interest in that shit. <laughs> Ferris is like, what? Treasure? Treasure? We're leaving yeah. behind treasure? Uh, what is <laughs> That's the gold wall? coin in the room. What are the walls made out of? Stone. Stone. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Those items might have some kind of use against whatever's out here in magic one. Or they might be just a trap. Um, I don't know. Do we want to try to get any of it or not? Well, do I still have a item? Potion of levitation? Potion of flying? Hmm. Yeah. Might need flying or levitation for the lava. 
<laughs> um. Hmm. Unless you want to try to climb the walls over. Yeah, uh, well, I could. Sure I'm pretty, pretty skilled in climbing walls. Uh, we don't have any things with spider climb or anything, do we? Not, not in the best. That would make it. That would make it easier, and so I wouldn't have to make chests every. Um. You know what I could use? I'll use the gem of steam. Oh yeah, that, that might be a good idea. Let's see yeah. if it gives me fluid. Um, use it. You you take out the uh, um, you take out the gem, and you look around. Everything that you see is ex the same thing you see through. So there's nothing hidden, nothing illusory, um, nothing that isn't what it appears to be already. Help me. DM, I'm going to pull one of my dates out of my pocket and throw it in there. Okay. See if it's hungry for fruit. <laughs> Might be vegan. <laughs> it could be. Um, yeah, it doesn't appear that you toss a date in there and it sort of lands and nothing. I don't know. All right. I'm out of ideas, guys. Unless we <laughs> want to use one of the potions or try to climb the walls over to the I item. <clears throat> well, we don't know that we need these items. Uh, remember what yeah. happened when we touched or took the spear? It's true. Mm -hmm. We got to kill a mummy. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> you have any idea how to kill ground? Mm -hmm. I'm Does sure it's not ground. Or? Probably an earth elemental or something. What's the significance of the things in there? They're all containers. So That's we've got like a, a flask. Maybe could hold water and an urn could hold dirt or ashes. I don't know about the cylinder. It could pretty much hold anything. Maybe air. You know what? That kind of makes a little bit of sense. Let's say that like the vial or the, the urn has ash. Ash is a base. Base stop acid. So like that marshy air. Acid. I'm, I'm just trying to think it out. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Sir Zedkiel of the horse riding clan? Oh. I think. I think perhaps. I should go first. We're still tied off on a rope, so if you start sinking or something bad happens, we'll pull you out. Or cut the rope. <laughs> or cut the rope. We might have to cut our line. <laughs> <laughs> you steps on a rust monster. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm lucky my sword is wood. <laughs> That's true. That is true. You might come out of the place Step naked. On but... a... You stun on a what is it a termite monster? <laughs> okay. Um, yes, I will volunteer. Paladins are always good for one. What the hell were we thinking? Moment during the game. All right. What are you doing? I'm gonna run and jump. <laughs> Try to jump <laughs> all the way up. It's a bouncy house. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why it's so fun. Fun. Well, you tell me where you want me to land. I guess go to the closest one, which would be that one in the top corner there. Yep. So up here in the upper yeah. right hand corner, as you look uh, the, directly across from the door, there is a. Um... Oh, crud. Um... 
the word vile. I'm looking for. Vile, thank you. Um, okay. So there's, let's see, let's try it again. Opposite the door in the corner is a small shelf on which is a glazed flask. In other nice. words, you know what a glazed flask, right? They made a flask and then they put it in something yeah. and fired it, right? Um, so there's a flask. In this corner over here, there is a small urn. And down here, there is a stone cylinder. Very well. Try for the flask first. Guessing, I have no idea. <laughs> I have zero clue. Okay. What... Here I go. All right, Zadkiel steps into the room. Hold you step tight. in. You step in and you feel the floor sort of spongy but solid beneath your feet. You move in about five feet or so when suddenly you see something on the floor in front of you. One of those sort of lumpy masses opens up and you see an eye. Uh-oh. A, sec a, second, later, a s second later. the door. second later. The eye. A couple, of, a couple of more eyes open up. And then before you can, before you realize what's going on, dozens of eyes suddenly pop open on the floor and the floor kind of moves as all these sharp fang mouths around this thing suddenly open up and you hear this cacophony of of words and sounds come blasting out of it. I need anybody that was in 60 feet of this creature to give me a saving throw versus spells or be confused. So it's a mind thing. Do we get our wisdom bonus? Um... It doesn't stay, but I am going to say because it is a mind thing, yes, you'll get a wisdom bonus. Versus so, spells, you say? Saving throw versus spells from everybody, please. I fail. I'm going to use one of my nat 20s. Okay. Ronnie Nobly. I have nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I just made a DM. I uh, want to get rid of this. Okay. I made it. I failed to understand what's going on. You get the uh, wisdom no. bonus. No. Yeah, um, you want to roll over, Deglin. You don't want to roll under. I rolled exactly. Yeah, I'm just saying. Oh, but no. yeah, no, you put you minus, minus five, five on yours. I'm like, okay, if you want to try to miss it, that's fine. I don't know why I keep getting that confused. I keep. Yeah, doing that's okay. All right, and I need to roll for Mythendar. Mythendar, this is where we say goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> as he rolls a nine, that might be good for him. He's seventh level magic user. Against spells? Yep, but he needs a 10. So he is going to use one of his plus ones. Leaves them with plus two. Okay, so we have Varus has used one of his nat 20s. So let me go ahead and get rid of that. So now Varus only has a single nat 20 left. Um, Ronnie Noblight saved. Zadkiel saved. Deglin saved. Varus saved. And Mythendar. So everybody has made their saving throw versus confusion and before I forget drop our good old friend the gibbering mouther right oh. there oh gibby what gibby who mouth. things are nasty it's it's a a he speaks paladin Yes, he speaks Paladin. Okay, as we transition ourselves into our favorite time of the night. Hello, friend. Ah, crud. Now we're pulling his ass out of there. <laughs> I brought you a toothbrush. <laughs> the latest invention from Rome. <laughs> Burp. 
All righty, children. Got a shoe. As we move into combat, let's talk about actions. Barris. As you I'm see going to the... pull out. Okay. Go ahead. I was going to say, as you see, you don't really see much of what's going on because it's dark in there, but your your vision does allow you to see that the floor moves and suddenly where this lumpy material was, you see these eyes and mouths and this horrendous cacophony of sound come blasting out of it, numbing your mind for a second before you kind of get it under control. It's almost like a wave of sound. You ever see that commercial dude sitting in a chair with the big, huge speakers and stuff and it blasts him in the face? That's kind of what, you're oh, yeah. lo- what you guys feel like. Um, without all the cool effects, right? As it sort of numbs your mind for a second. But again, you manage to overcome it. Um, but you can see that this, that Zadkiel is standing right in the middle of this slump of goo. Not necessarily um, knowing what this creature is, I will uh, reach for two flasks of oil okay. and think of burning that floor. Gotcha. Deglin, actions? I'm pulling them out from with the rope. Okay. Mythendar is going to prepare a fireball. Well, he's just going to do a spell. He doesn't know what yet, but he'll do spell. Ronnie. I'm going to cutlass that thing, DM. Varys. Uh, turn invisible and max damage. Gotcha. Zadkiel. Back Zadkiel. out! <laughs> <laughs> Just back out! <laughs> run! Run for your life! <laughs> I call my war horse! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where is my war horse, by the way? Back at home. It's back at we home. We ate it on the way. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. You're going to need a new quest. <laughs> but we were hungry. Come on, man. What are you going to do? Yeah, I told you I'm going to fight it. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you. But I'm pulling you out. Yeah, as you're pulling me out, I'm going to swing at it. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. All right. As we begin... Oh, hang on. I'm going to do this. Because of... Stupid. Yeah, tie score. Tie does not go to the runner in this game. As the gibbering mouther goes first, as all, as it thick of its mouths, as this thing sort of envelops up, coming around you, Varus, you and Deglin suddenly feel the ground beneath where you guys are standing becoming mushy, as if you oh, were, shit. as if you were standing in quicksand, as the gibbering mouthers flows up and tries to flow over the top of Zadkiel. It gets six attacks on you. Uh, wait a second. I did begin. I did begin combat, and then what the hell? Oh. No, I'm gonna re-roll until we get it again. Okay. There we go. We're back to where we were. For some reason, it it ended. It closed combat. I was like, what the hell? Okay. So the creature, it gets six attacks. Um, it is a four hit die creature. Zadkiel's armor class is a minus two. Or is it a minus one? It is a... It looks like it's a minus two. Gotcha. Okay. So let's clear this out. And we'll roll one. One miss, two, one hit, one, two hits. One bite fell 
slow. <laughs> so that's one, two, three, four, five. All right, so he gets one, two, three hits. Zadkiel, you suffer three hit points of damage. One hit point for each. Um, let me double check to make sure. Uh, yep. Want to make sure. Um, it doesn't do any additional damage with the mile. Oh, yep. I take it back. When three miles are attached to a single character, that character must check each round for slipping. Okay. So I need you to give a 2d6. Zadkiel, roll 2d6 and you have to get a four or less. Oh, so close. You got a five. Now, that said, Zadkiel does have... Zadkiel does have a plus two available, so you could take one down. So you could use one of your plus ones to lower your score to a four, which would save. Otherwise, not. Your choice. Sure. Okay, so Zadkiel uses one of his plus ones. And you now save. Okay, so that is it for this, for that creature's turn. Varus, you are becoming invisible. That is yours for this round, and then you can move if you want to. Um, the problem is, as you go to look, this thing doesn't really have a back. It's sort of like this amorphous blob. It's like a, it's like a, uh, um, an ooze of some kind. It doesn't really have a back or a front. Well, I'm gonna um, just get behind it and try and stab it. Okay. Gotcha. Open it. Zenkill. Okay. So. And just so great. you know, this thing is you're walking across this this floor. Even though it's flowing toward Zadkiel, this floor is still completely comprised of this gibbering mouther. So there are mouths oh, and eyes mm -hmm. on the floor as well. It doesn't just kind of move up into one creature it's like the whole floor uh, well maybe i'll just stand it then. okay that's that's cool that's fine yeah i'm sure um go, go ahead and roll its armor class is one i believe that should hit 19 yeah that should hit armor class one is it large um no it's well you know what let me see what it says in here i don't necessarily think it's considered to be large even though it fills up this whole room, for for lack of a better, or for most of this room anyway. Um, so I am going to say no, it is just a regular size. Nice. Five. Nice. Nicely done. As We're you slam to into it... Uh, magic moves. Yep. As you slam down into it, your blade pierces in and you realize it's ne definitely a fleshy creature of some kind as you pull it back a spew of blackish sort of reddish black blood comes pouring out of the wound as the whole thing shudders from the from the damage of the blow Barris so I'm gonna um, I'm going to have uh, my bottle of oil out and uncorked moving up here Okay. And do I have an eye anywhere near dump that whole bottle on? Um, yes, there's eyes on the floor inside to the right of Zadkiel, and there's also to the left of Zadkiel and to the front left and front right and on the other side of Zadkiel. So there are eyes so to everywhere. The, to the right of Zadkiel, as much as I can just sort of spray that bottle of oil into that corner here, um, I'm going to do that and then... With my other hand, I'm going to ease my flame tongue out and utter the word ignite. Okay. Go ahead and roll a to hit to see if you damage with the fire. If you do, it's a 2d4, and then it's a d4 the second round. All right. Yep. 
It is armor class one. Uh, that would miss. That would miss as you ignite the flame, but you you watch in disappointment as everything around the eyes and mouths is burning like the the earthy material is burning like its skin and whatnot, but it doesn't appear to affect it um, as the protective coverings on its eyes and stuff ward off the flames. All right. Deglin. I'm going to pull dead kill out of there. Okay. You have two other people between you and him. You've got Varus and Barris, both standing in the doorway. Can I pull him between or is there enough room? Um, one of them is going to have to move. There's no way to move to pull him between. Um, well, if I pull him and he just knocks one of them over, would that be okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh, oh, I forgot he had the rope. Okay, I was thinking you're reaching and grabbing by the shoulder and pull. All right, oh. so go ahead and pull... You're going to have to do a strength check against Zadkiel's strength as he's standing in there trying to fight it. Unless Zadkiel says he's not going to resist your pulling, it's going to be a strength on strength check. Okay, I'll just... It's up to you. Zadkiel. Plus, what's your... Yeah, I don't like that kind of talk, strength on strength. All right, so... um, Yeah, I'm not going to resist. Okay. Okay. As you, he pulls you back, you step back, slamming into Barris, knocking Barris backwards, bringing you in as this creature now comes with you, towards you, and it gets a attack on you as you move out of its, um, out of its range. It's, it's still attached to you. Um, now it is Did going to get my attack before. Huh? No, well... It's not your turn yet, but as you got pulled back, it gets an attack of opportunity on you as okay. it's attached to you, and now you take three more hit points of damage from the creature that's attached to you. Now you can attack. It's attached to me? Yes. Three of its mouths have attached onto you, and it's sucking the blood out of you. As okay. as he dragged you backwards, it dragged you or you dragged it with you, its attack of opportunity was an automatic hit because it already had three attacked on you, or three attached to you. So, but okay. you get your attack. Oh, is it my turn then? It is your, uh, hang on, I think so. Let me see whose turn is it on combat. Yes, it is Zach Kills. Okay, I want to try and attack it then. Okay. Armor class one. <laughs> uh, nope. As you it's a one hit. No. As you get dragged backwards, your blow is is the the carefully aimed blow that you had. As you're gonna spear it in one of its eye, suddenly get jerked backwards by Deglin, um, throwing off your your shot, and it completely whiffs on the creature as you slam into the door, um, almost knocking over um, Barris and Varus together. But you manage to brace yourself in the door as the creature comes with you, flowing over you, now reaching out toward Varus as well. Um, let's see. Looks like we got a pickle. We got a pickle. A All right. Mythendar. As he sort of steps, tries to get a good aim, launches a... Um, I think uh, he's seventh level, so that means he's got three, four, four magic missiles or five magic missiles. So four mag, yeah, I think it's four magic missiles, right? Yeah, that should be four. All right. I'm caught. I'm I'm second guessing myself, but I know it's a D four plus one, right? Yeah, so it's forty four plus four. As he blasts it for 19 hit points of damage. Boom! Blowing the thing in half as, oh, oh. as his magic missiles booms. Snaps the that creature was a great roll, in DM. half. Yes, it was. As he slams into you, or he slams into it, 
eviscerating what was left of the the gibbering mouther, leaving you guys free with this bloody pulpy mass uh, sort of oozing back onto the floor of this chamber. These things don't regenerate, do they? Did anybody oh, not. know? Oh, not. <laughs> Let's go grab those items before the thing comes back. Yes. Clean it out the room. Maybe there's a secret door in there, too. Oh, yeah. Look around. Yeah, so search the room and take all the stuff. Okay. All right. Yeah. If anybody else wants to search, I'm going to roll for Mythendar. Okay. Searching through the room, Ronnie, Varys, Mythendar, you guys don't really find anything. Deglin, you don't find anything as well outside of what you guys... Uh... Aha, uh -huh, Varys didn't roll. There it goes. <laughs> um... Yeah, you guys don't find anything other than what was in there. In the flask, you can see it is it it, it contains some kind of a dried powder. Um, in the urn, you see what looks to be a human heart, albeit dried out, as if all the fluid has been taken out of it. It's not really mummified per se, but it's just completely dried out. It's a husk of a human heart. And the cylinder is actually some kind of a baton made of stone. But, hmm. Hmm. A PR-24? <laughs> Time bomb. Oh. Nightstick. Whatever you want. Yeah. What do we wish to do? Well, I'm pumping on the channel just in case. Okay. And uh, I stay home and uh, leave, and we can check them out later. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's why I try and rest in here. Well, if, if the thing comes back, I don't know if those things regenerate or not. Yeah. No idea. So. Question is, why are we going from here? Well, we're fairly safe on this plane, right? Anything try to come and get us, whatever that thing that was that was pushing us around, will push it. Right? Myth and Dark can cast a detect magic if you guys want to know what those if they're magical or not. Oh, I can cast that too. No, I got the spell magic. Or we can wait till later, whichever. No. Well. They're yeah. probably magical. I mean, it wouldn't be in a room like at least like a key to a some type of. Yeah, they might have something to do with the murals or something. All right. Somebody with a uh, history and religion. Wrong, wrong religion, but. <laughs> um, oh, where to now? I don't know. It's 11 o'clock, so... Yep, we are going to... I was going to actually... I was actually going to say I was going to stop right now. Um, so that way we have a good stopping point. A little earlier than normal. I know we normally go to 11.30, but um, like I said, I'd stop a little bit early. That way um, we will actually get an opportunity for me to be better prepared for, for the rest of the session as I am not 100%. Not a hundred percent on what all I still have to uh, to get put up on there, like walls and stuff like that. So, any um, uh, chance my roll my D twenty can roll over? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll allow that. I'll allow that nat twenty. Yep, I'll allow Ooh. the nat twenty to go over because we didn't potentially didn't need it. Um, not sure if you would have needed it. For the end of the session, anyway. But since I cut a little early, I'll I'll give you yeah, the benefit of yeah, the doubt. So. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So, 
We're going to go ahead and cut it there. For those that know, we always switch over to the after party. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I appreciate everybody that's been hanging out with us. I know our players definitely appreciated the Nat 20s and the Nat 1s and all the other stuff that you guys gave to us. I really do appreciate it. Um, hopefully you guys will join us next Monday as we uh, try to figure out um, what's going on here or where they're at or are they able to make it through. So um, for those that have never played this adventure, it's one of my favorites and this is only the second time I've ever written it, uh, um, run it. And so that's why, like I said, I feel bad that I was a little off guard, but been swamped at work completely unprepared for tonight, but at least it didn't go too badly, I don't think. Players, hopefully it wasn't too bad for you. Um, but what I'm going to do now, for those that come over to our Discord, I'm going to shift over to the open channel for anybody that wants to join us. Um, in three, two, one, boop, I am on the open channel for those players that come with. I appreciate it. I know that usually, like, uh, Lando has to, has to bail out um, a little bit early. Um, so, but anyway, I really do appreciate you guys, uh, hanging out with us tonight. Um, don't forget this Friday, this Friday, we've got our fifth edition game going on, um, as our heroes of Christchurch try to solve the mystery on what's going on, um, with the, with Nilo's sister. They just defeated her in combat, um, ended up killing her in fact. Um, and so now Nilo is trying to figure out how she can prove that her sister is dead because her body basically disintegrated. All that was left was her armor and some other stuff. Um, and she's trying to figure out her sister gave her a, a name to see. Um, and so they're headed back to, to Traft in order to figure out who that person is and if they can find him and what he knows about his sister or what he knows about anything. So yeah, so it's becoming a twisted convoluted kind of a storyline. I like it. It's been fun so far. So hopefully you guys will join us as the party continues. Um, they left the, the, the woods where they uh, battled her sister and on the way back to town, um, one of the towns nearby, um, cause they have a ways to travel. They got to go through the woods, um, to this gnomish community and then back over the mountains and then over the trap. So they got a lot, a lot of traveling going on, but on the way they've stumbled across this old mansion that's overrun and, and stuff. And they're just getting ready to go check that out. That's where we left off. So hopefully you guys will join us Friday for it. So, um, anyway, players, appreciate it. Who who jumped over with us? Did anybody? I'm not even sure. I know Iger did. Hey, Iger and Monkey. So everybody else I know how to bail. Um, <laughs> uh, looks like Ronnie had to go running for his football game. Got to watch the last of Seattle. Um, is that even still playing? I'm not even sure. Usually this is about, about time the game's getting over and stuff. So, so guys, I hope the game was okay for you. Hope you enjoyed yeah. yourself. It was, uh, I thought it was kind of fun. Like I said, I haven't uh, yeah. I haven't run this adventure in years, and I mean a lot of years. And fortunately, I've got uh, maps and stuff that'll kind of, uh, yeah, got that one. So I've got I got some found some good decent maps of it that I'm able to kind of run. So everybody else, I uh, appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with us. Who do we want to? Who do you want to raid? I'm not going to spend too much time with you guys tonight. Um, my uh, eyes are really bothering me. My tooth is bothering me. It's like I'm falling apart here. So uh, let's see. Who do we want to? Do we want us to go to our old standby? Darling. That's Darling. Yep. She's. I like going over there just because she's got the Adams Family on, man. She, she, got, she got me with these Adams Family streams she's been doing. It's been pretty awesome. So we're going to do that. We're going to kind of go over here. Unfortunately, I can't do it from my stream deck because my stream deck's messing up. So I'm just like a shit show tonight. Really bad. So anyway, we're going to head on over to Darling. Hopefully you guys will, will stay with us. Um, like I said, normally we do an after party, but Today, since we're early and we're just going to cut everybody out, we're going to give everybody a little bit of break. It's kind of like getting off early on Friday from work. Um, but we're going to we're going to pop on over to Darling Creep Show. If you guys have never been uh, to her channel, uh, show her some love. Um, make sure that you uh, 
make a lot of noise to let her know we're there. She's always really good about acknowledging us, though. And let's see if that works. So anyway, um, what else do we want to talk about? Nothing. Uh, I think we're good. So tonight's session was good. Friday session. We will be here next Monday as we continue to go through the hidden shrine of Tomoa Khan. For those that didn't know what the adventure was. Um, hopefully you guys will enjoy it as much as I enjoy running it. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're going to head over to Darling. And uh, like I've always said, in a world you can be anything you want. All we ask is that you be kind. Let's hang on and see if we can't get, oh, figures. Let's go. Uh, and it won't let me use that symbol, so we just have to go. Boink. There we go. So let's see how many viewers we can get. Hopefully everybody will go across. Um, I appreciate everybody uh, joining us. Like I said, as we, as we get over there, just go ahead and um, make a lot of noise, show her a lot of love. She's uh she's great people so we'll see you guys next week. Peace.